fans, friends, family, listeners, haters, supporters, and detractors, War Room Sports presents to you episode 248 of the War Room, where we talk about the NBA MVP race, the start of Major League Baseball, and much, much more, including the NCAA March Madness race for the title. Will the Kentucky Monstars take it? Special shout out to War Room Sports Podcast Network, family, tissue in the tape, Savad and Philly Matic as they hold it down for us while we lay on the beach in the Bahamas. Episode 248 starts right now, The War Room. Blog Talk Radio. Welcome to The War Room. We got Dev, Kill, Jimmy, PJ, B. Austin, the Hot Block Commander. Sports fans, you are once again live in the War Room, brought to you by War Room Sports on the WRS Podcast Network. I'm Jimmy the Blueprint, and I'm here at the round table with special guests. We got Phil Maddock and Savai, the dynamic duo from the world famous Tissue in the Tape podcast, which is also on the network. Listen, we have a great show for you today. Uh, the Titty Boys, as we call them, oh, excuse me, men, they sub in for B. Austin and Dev, who are um, out <laughs> feeding hungry children in Somalia. Um, the Final Four is here. MLB opening day is upon us, and the NBA's final stretch is underway and much more. So strap in. Keep it locked right here. And if you want to get in on the conversation, you can join us in the JW Philly Realty chat room, which is blogtalkradio.com slash the war room, or on Facebook or Twitter, which is at war room sports. You can also hit us up directly when we open up the Digital Extreme Technologies hotline, and that's 323-410-0012. We're going to open it up in about 30 minutes. Before we get started, you know, we have a job. When you're, We have a job for you, something we want you to do, you know, because we're doing our job right now. When we're not on the air, we need you to listen to all of our great shows on the War Room Sports Podcast Network. You can visit warroomsports.com and click on the WRS Podcast Network. Um, there's a little, there's a little uh, thing right there for it, you know, where all of our stuff is in warroomsports.com. Or you can go right to our mobile app or go to iTunes and look up the War Room Sports Podcast Network. You'll find some of the best talk shows on the web, such as the Broad Street Line with Rory and Chris, After Further Review with the Mayor, my guys who are here with me today, Tissue with a Tape Show, you know, also Sports Track Radio, Brandon and Anthony. We have a whole lot more shows. We have NASCAR shows, soccer shows, all kinds of stuff. You can um, also listen at fatsradio.com for all of our sports shows, <clears throat> which includes this show, The War Room. Uh, and uh, War Room, we're on Sundays and Tuesdays at 3 p.m. Tissue and a Tape. Welcome to the war room, homie. What's going on? What up? Hey, Listen, what's man, going on, guys? Yeah, man, just uh, happy yeah. to have you guys aboard. You know, you have our sister show, what have you, but we want to bring you on and, you know, talk sports, you know, as well as hip-hop. And since we have our hip-hop guys on, I want to ask you guys a question, man. Y'all guys sign up for today yet or no? Uh, that's, a, that's a big no for me uh, just yet. I want, I, want to, I want to kind of fall back, see what's going on. You know, I mean, at, at ten bucks, twenty bucks a month, I, I want to see exactly what I'm going to get for my for my dub. Got you. How about you, Savai? You sign up yet? Uh, I have a, I have a, I don't want to call it a little thing, but I have a thing in my life called uh, Phil Maddox. Uh, he, he's pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> well, you got, but you got Phil Maddox in your life. You don't really need such things as. Uh, this is absolutely true. Title. Yeah, I, I, yeah I'm, I'm good. Old to dial, yo. Yeah, Phil Maddox is like he got the hookup. He like he like Master P and whatnot. Um, also, yeah, exactly. uh, I was showing I was showing Dev this afternoon that you know we also for people who like who like hood movies, there's a thing called Trapflix.com. It's like the Netflix for, for hood movies. It's called Trapflix. <laughs> so oh man! Yo, you guys, yo, you guys gotta go check it out. It's 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 hilarious. But um, and you know, it's a lot of different movies on there. Straight hood movies, but Trapflix. I was like, yo, between <laughs> Tadal. Trap flicks, Netflix, go. everybody trying to hit you with the subscription thing now. That's the new thing. <laughs> yeah. Everybody so now, now I'm waiting. Yeah, I'm now I'm waiting on like the NBA and NFL to like you know come up with uh 
their subscription model where they're like, look, we're going to take it off of that. You got to pay $20 a month to watch NFL football. Oh, you know it's coming. It's coming. It's coming. Now, they, they they it's an individual team. You know, yeah, this, yeah, how about that? This, London team game, this London game that's coming up next year that won't be uh, televised where you just can't watch it. I think they're going to really start to start to do stuff like that where, you know, the fans of that it. team, yeah, they're SOL. So it's like you got to find a way. If, if you told Bengals fans they had to pay $15 to watch the Bengals, they probably would, but they probably wouldn't, depending on how. Yeah, but see, that's the thing, though. Are. They're not – I don't know if they can do it team by team, you know what I mean? Because, like, who's going to pay for the Jaguars? Right. <laughs> They'll probably <laughs> package them in with somebody good. They'll probably package Because you see – you see HBO. HBO is like breaking off and doing their own thing when you can just pay $20 a month just for HBO and HBO Go. Yep. Where you don't have to have HBO cable. Go. So just thinking ahead, man, in the world of sports, I could actually see that. You know, um, you break off from the cable company just by the NBA, you know, for a certain amount of money. But it's definitely on its way, man. Anyway, man, let's sure. just jump right into these sports stories, man. Let me tell everybody what happened uh, this past week while they were on the grind. But for those who don't know, on the grind is brought to you by Direct TV. If you like a better TV experience than cable has to offer, which includes the NFL Sunday ticket, uh, right now you have to go through Direct TV to get that. It's not its own thing yet. But just go to our website, warmsports.com, click on that Direct TV logo, and order a better TV experience at a discounted Warm Sports sign up rate. If you call yourself a sports fan, you gotta have Direct TV. Now, first story I wanna get you guys' opinion on is Dwight Freeney. You guys remember uh, the former Colt Dwight Freeney, the pass rusher? He's suing Bank of America for $20 million in a a case of fraud. Now, um, according to my crack research, which includes going on Twitter, and that's pretty much it, um, he had a a couple deals. um, And these gentlemen who supposedly took his money are already in prison. Bank of America is saying they didn't work for Bank of America at the time. But um, he's saying that Bank of America has has to, to do with it as well. Um, Bank of America, Merrill Lynch name is in, involved in this. But what did you guys hear about the story and what were your thoughts on this? Well, yeah, you man. guys, you guys have a great segment and I actually saw a shirt uh, that I think is now available uh warroomsports.com. Uh HOF or FOH. Um I think one day Dwight Freeney might be actually considered for the Hall of Fame, the HOF, but Right now, I'm pretty sure uh, Bank of America is telling him FOH uh, in terms of <laughs> his, claims, his claims for this. Like, they, they have some real long money, uh, and I'm sure they have a great legal counsel. Uh, it sounds like he didn't make very good investments, or he didn't make – he basically had these guys controlling his NFL salary. Like, it was direct yeah. deposit going in, into his account. And it just doesn't sound like he was making very sound decisions, and I think he probably got bit uh, in his back for it, and now he's probably gonna have to pay the cost for it. Yeah, yeah. You know what it is though. Um, when I read this story, and of course we've seen like uh, what happened with the whole broke that documentary that like shook a lot of people and made people realize just how crazy it is with athletes and them going broke. Um, but it seems to me like all these guys are reaching instead of just like. You're in the NFL, so you're making whatever many millions of dollars you're making. And a lot of these dudes, instead of just like, you know, saving or or or, or having a balanced portfolio, whatever it may be, they try to, you know, start these crazy businesses. Like one guy started a company that sold fl- like floatable furniture or what have you, and just all kinds of weird stuff. They try to hit home runs. And, and this story right here is crazy because Bank of America definitely will tell him the FOH. Their money is longer than Broad Street, so... <laughs> uh, sorry for you, uh, Mr. Freeney. You put your trust in some bad people, but um, I don't know. Phil, what you what you think about this? Oh, it's gonna be a bad day for uh, the Freeney household, man. Uh, <laughs> like it's strictly gonna be a FOA situation, as my brother put it. Because the the fact of the matter is, as the homie Rask has put it, big bank always takes little bank, and everything goes. They can just they they can, yeah anything goes, and they will have it to where they'll have it in court so long that he'll just he'll have to give up because the money the money will eventually run out on his end. They theirs will never run out. They 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 got money from the government and didn't have to pay it back. So that that tells you how they roll. Yeah. Shout out to uh, Goliath National Bank, excuse me, Bank of America cuz like you just said, um you know, they do what they want to do, man. Um so 
Dwight Freeney, man, I, you know, I, I definitely feel sorry for you, but, but you know, the biggest point made here was with Savant said, like, yo, you, you, just, you get put your trust in some terrible people, man. You got to do a better job of watching your money. Now, a lot of people say, well, athletes don't have time to do that because, uh, you know, um, they're playing. Listen, man, yo, bottom line is this, Dwight Freeney. You should be ashamed. Got to give my man a JoJo award real quick, man. Anyway. That never gets old. <laughs> Here's something I found funny when I saw the headline. Michael Sam says he's not the only gay person in the NFL. He was reached out to by other gay athletes saying how courageous he was. Um, only reason I found this funny, I, I can care less about his sexuality or who he sleeps with, but he said he's not the only one in the NFL. Like, under, from where I stand, like, is he in the NFL? <laughs> that, that's one. <laughs> and, and he's the only one running a five four forty. So, <laughs> like, is he in the NFL? Like, what do you guys think about this story of Michael Sam? You know, because I know a lot of people probably were shook. If if indeed what he's saying is true, a lot of people were shook. Do you guys believe that? Do you guys believe what he's saying or what? Oh, definitely. He's he's not the only one. Just by the just by logic and the, I deal with mathematics, and he he can't be the only one. Just off of that. Now, mm -hmm. if he, if everybody was running up and telling them that he was, wasn't the only one, that's a whole different story. Yeah. My thing about this him is, is, I mean, he's trying to do anything that he can to stay relevant. Um, even if it, you know, it came from him smooching his boyfriend live at the draft to him <laughs> being on dan dancing with the stars, you know, um, you know, he, he got his name essentially to a lot of people from, from being a devastating you know, a defensive force in the SEC. And then he went from, you know, that being his claim to fame to now, you know, I'm going to be this trailblazer, Paul, uh, for, for, um, for, you know, for, for gay athletes. I think he just lost, lost his way with that. He, he's basically just trying to just keep his name out there. Um, yeah, he, like Phil said, like, is he even in the NFL anymore? Like, was he, Phil, was he on Madden this year? No. Exactly. So. <laughs> Um, yeah, uh, Brian Blades was still on Madden this year, and, and Michael Sam wasn't. So it's like, uh, you're not even on Madden, man. You're not, you're not in the NFL, man. Get out of here. Yeah. You, you know, know, it's funny because me, me and B. Austin talked about this, and I'm going to get you guys' opinion on this because it's interesting how his whole thing was, I um, want to be known as a football player and, and, you know, not the gay football player. But when that didn't work out, now he's going against everything that he said. Like, you know what I mean? Now he's just making that his – it is his claim to fame – but he's running with it when initially his whole thing was, you know, I just want to be recognized as a football player. So, you know, I mean, I guess, I guess that's, that's what you were talking about, Savah, but do you, do you guys see how, you know, one may say it's hypocritical. One could just say it's a, you know, a, a change in his thought process. What do you guys think about that? I, I think he realizes that he's not a good enough football player to be recognized strictly as a football player. So that's where the sideshow comes in. Like if, if his if his forty time was four or five at, at defensive end a linebacker or he was just a phenomenal player in the NFL like he was in the SEC, he would be on somebody's football team right now, gay or not. Because yeah. 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 the coach coaches want to win. You know, if somebody would have took him, you sold a lot of jerseys and all that and got ten, twelve sacks out of him, pause maybe. But um, <laughs> that 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 is uh, that's all it comes down to. He's not good enough to be recognized strictly on his play alone. So to remain relevant, like Vod said, that's where the other things come in. Yeah, and yeah. yo, shit. I'm gonna take the step further. Uh -huh, I think go ahead. if he would have run, if he were, if he would have run a four five at pro day, or you know just. Maybe because he did, he did come out and say before it got to the draft time. But I think if, if he realized that he was going to be able to to make some money uh, mm -hmm. being an NFL player and he had the tools and the skills and all the attributes that it takes to be elite, I don't think he would have come out. I mean, just based off of some of the things that he's done here lately, it just seems like he's, you know, he's using what he, he calls his orientation or his preference as his claim to fame, like I said before. And I don't think he's basing it around football anymore. So Yeah. Um, now, now, the word at the time was, 
the word at the time was that he came out because uh, a lot of people knew and he was trying to basically control the story as opposed to, you know, being rumors and everything and it kind of hurting him. But, you know, some may say it hurt him anyway, regardless. Anyway, let's move on from this story right here. Shout out to at CaseyMac38 on Twitter who says uh, that, you know, Dwight Freeney went through all that and he would have been better off just putting his money in a mattress at this point, um, <laughs> which is true. Next story I want to get you guys' opinion about is this. A woman is arrested after recently recanting um, assault allegations on former Bama player Jonathan Taylor. Now, Jonathan was cut. Um, he had previous assault allegations uh, from a woman, but after this story, you know, it kind of messed up this guy's uh, career so far, but now she's recanting. Now, this is his girlfriend, so, you know, we don't know what the truth may be. What do you guys think about this story? You think she's, you know, telling the truth or is she recanting because she realized she um, messed up, you know, his chances of uh, taking it to the next level? Because that is his chick. Uh, this this one right here was a story that I really thought was sad just because um, you know, this is this isn't something that you that you play around with. You know, Brian Banks, you know, he's he's somebody that, you know, I've heard you talk about on this show before and uh, you know, he, he essentially had his career taken away at a young age and he essentially was in, in jail as well. Um mm -hmm. over allegations like it's just not something that that you can use to put somebody in a predicament just because of how you feel about them, you know. Like it's just it's yeah. just not right, you know. Um and I think she may have been feeling guilty uh, as far as her being arrested. You know, I, I, I applaud that. But at the same time, you know, it's just not a good situation. And Nick Saban is going to have a lot of explaining to do in these next coming weeks uh, as this story starts to get a lot more steam. Uh, just because, yeah. uh, you know, people want to know what exactly went on and, you know, how well uh, this guy was vetted, you know, when he was uh, con being considered to be a part of that team. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man. Absolutely. It's crazy because he was already at Georgia and he got kicked out of Georgia for domestic abuse um, in a case that hasn't actually been ruled on yet. Um, so and that one, so there, there's um, that. And Saban picked him up. He said, in in some what I read, he was like saying he wanted to give him another chance, and he was just it was just he said he doesn't regret giving him a second chance, but he just regrets that it didn't work out. So yeah, I I think I think Saban right now is kind of untouchable in the college football world. So he's just going to get looked at like you know some he tried to help a, a quote unquote troubled kid, and it just didn't work out. But more so for the kid, I'm, I'm actually glad that that the uh, the woman was arrested because when when you do that and it's not true, it one. It, it, it damages the player or the or the the guy or whatever, but then it it, it makes it hard for for women who make those claims that are actually true. Mm -hmm. So when when if somebody does get abused and it's legit, they're going to be looked at with all kinds of extra scrutiny because the person before them just lied, and you know they they're damaging people they haven't even come in contact with or people that have yet to be victimized. So it's just. I, th I think she definitely needs to uh, pay for that a little bit. Yeah, great. That's that's a that's a great point. That's a great point, man. So it's, it's not it's really no happy ending to that story. Any way you want to look at it, it's a sad situation all around. And the final story of uh, why you were on the grind. Um, you know, we all we all know that hip hop and sports always intersects. But uh, watching this new ludicrous, watching this new ludicrous video, he has Marshawn Lynch in the video for the song Beast Mode. Um, which he says was inspired by uh, Marshawn Lynch. So my question to you guys, you guys are the hip-hop guys. Did you guys see the video? What did you think about it? And also, uh, what do you think about Ludaversal? <laughs> I'll, I'll go first. Uh, I felt like um, anytime I can get Marshawn Lynch my TV screen, whether it's him talking, him not talking, him in a music video, anything – I'm a big fan, and I'm going to tune in. So uh, I, no I normally probably wouldn't watch the Ludacris video with too much intensity, but I definitely uh, <laughs> tuned in to see to see my boy Marshawn. Uh, shout out to all the real Africans out there, by the way. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, as far as uh, Luda Ludaversal goes, uh, definitely got into it just to do the due diligence because we're going to talk about it on our show on Friday. Uh, 
Phil brought to my attention that, you know, first, uh, this is uh, Luda's eighth album, and Dang. there's really only been one or two that, that's been subpar. For the most of them, they've been decent, and a lot of them have been very good. So, um, you know, shout to him for his longevity, for him to have uh, eight albums on Def Jam at that, you know, not E1 or... Yeah, uh, yeah, some some other, you know, get eight Def Jam albums. That's that that's up there with the yeah, days, that, that, the LL. So you gotta yeah, look exactly. at him and you gotta say, you know, you gotta say, you gotta take your hat off to him. Uh, he's not my cup of tea when it comes to music. I, I've gone so far as to say he's like the uh, the male Missy uh, at times. <laughs> no, not that far, far though. That far? Um, yeah, I mean, you know, uh, the the down south Buster Rhymes. I used to say that too, but. Some of those videos, he definitely was on his was on was in his, was in his Missy bag. So I can see uh, a Buster. Yeah, shout, I can see the Buster. Well, here's my thing. Um, real quick before Phil uh, gives his opinion, um, I, he has like good albums. I don't think he has any great albums. He's he's what me and Phil were just talking about before the show started. He, to me, he's like a playlist artist. Like, he give me a couple songs on each album that I like. I just add them to a ludicrous playlist. Like, you know, like, thank God for playlists, by the way, because a lot of people don't no make doubt. great albums no more. So, you know, shout out to Playlist. Whoever created the idea of Playlist, yo, God bless you. But, um, shout out to <laughs> Playlist. <laughs> word up. So he's one of those guys, man. And in terms of the video, like you said, anytime you can see Marshawn Lynch is great and hilarious. Yo, it's, it's funny because as soon as you see him, you just laugh without him even saying anything. But uh, Phil Maddock, what's your opinion on Luda Versa and uh, Marshawn Lynch? I'm just yo, uh, hey, I'm, I'm – <laughs> yo, I – it's, it's, that's a difficult spot for me to Marshawn Lynch you know, being being 100% nine the game since 1984, gold blooded, gold over green. Um, Got gotcha. you. It's, it's to li- I like Marshawn Lynch. I just wish he played for somebody else because he's <laughs> that good and he makes it very difficult for my for my guys to eat. So that being said, you know the video the video's cool as far as far as Luda. I, I'm a Luda fan, and 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 I, I I won't go as far as call him call him the down south Buster. I though I get the comparisons. I think he's a bit more lyrical than Buster. He's he's a he's a very very polished MC, but he 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 follows a lot of the formulas that a lot of other artists have followed, where you make songs for the chicks and you know for the radio, but then you do your your lyrical, and then a lot of people don't actually get past the the animated videos or the or the or the sound effects or punchlines he may do on some of the songs that they that they never even get to the to the lyrics a lot of times that are on the tracks like a couple of tracks like uh the Alvin Off tracks that he would do with uh Four Eyes mm-hmm. on, on some of the earlier albums are, are crazy and um but to your point he does not have what I would consider a classic album or a great album but he has a couple of very, very good albums. And always, yeah. he always gives a solid effort. There's, I can only honestly say one of the albums was was like I'm not listening to this ever again. Like that that type of bad. But even then, Red Light District. Had, uh, no Battle that, of the Sexes. Oh Battle. God! Oh God! I forgot about that. that, that <laughs> I don't even want to bring that up. Yo, um, Dev, Dev chimed in all the way from Somalia. He says that uh, how about the Down South Red Man? Nah, nah, Reg, Reggie. That that's just, I got a special place in my heart for Reggie Noble. So I oh, see. Well, that's just by. I, I, I get the compare. I get the comparison though, in terms of like you know, um, well, being being but, like you know, comical with it a little bit. Uh, but see, but Red Man got Reggie muddy waters. Though, Reggie got muddy waters. So Reggie got a Reggie got a classic album under his belt. Yeah, pack pack pistol posse. Like Reggie really did like have like guns on him, and you know, used to rock. You know, like yeah, like he Red, Reggie was on his thug thug life for a little bit yeah but the thing about reggie which is amazing about it he didn't really like he was he may have been about that but in terms of his body of work he was really like silly with it so i I get the comparison in terms of like uh you know being animated having the funny videos and that and all that but um the difference between like red man and say ludicrous is uh muddy waters to me muddy waters is amazing anyway man let's move on and jump into this next segment man let's give some birthday shout outs and get you guys opinion on these people who are having birthdays today and the birthdays are brought to you by Digital Extreme Technologies. Do you or your business need a custom website? Well, for dynamic, professional, and most of all, affordable custom website solutions, you need Digital Extreme Technologies. No need to break the bank for an effective online presence. Top quality results-driven websites. 
at incredibly affordable prices. If you don't have all your money, you can put something on it. Financing options are available. Visit digitalextremetech.com or call 267-205-4203. And if you want a discount, listen, say War Room Sports sent you. Now it's time to give some birthday shout outs. First birthday shout out to, uh, let's say, Jeremy Bloom, the Olympian, turns 33. I really have no opinion whatsoever on Jeremy Bloom. Um, you know, he's a skier. Um, you know, I'm not in the skiing or anything like that. You know, I don't, you know, skiing or anything to do with the ice, man. I ain't with that, man. So, uh, but shout out to him on his birthday. Nonetheless, he turns 33. <laughs> this guy, we got a Niners fan. Phil Maddock is a Niners fan. This guy played for both of your Niners as well as my Broncos. Bill Romanowski turns 49. Yes. What do you guys remember about Bill Romanowski? Racist. <laughs> he, what he, what he, 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 he spit in uh he spit in JJ Stokes' face, right? Took his heart. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. I remember him kicking Larry Sanders in the head like 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 uh like he was Reggie Roby or something. <laughs> like he, he played, when when he played for the Eagles, he, he uh he, he played two seasons with the Eagles. Uh they were kind of the sandwich in between the Niners and the Broncos. And he uh he kicked Larry Sanders that played for the Cardinals. And Listen, that's all Roy uh, rage, man. That's all Roy rage, man. Pretty much. He was in. He was, <laughs> yeah. he was in the Balco. He was in the Balco uh, joint too. You know, he was with the cream and the clear. <laughs> no doubt. <laughs> all right, next birthday we got. We got a set of twins, NBA twins. Brooke and Robin Lopez turned twenty-seven. Who's the better twin? If if, hmm. if I'm if I'm starting a team, give me uh, give me uh, Robin. Wow. The one with the this net. Funny. It's a couple years yeah. ago, everybody would have said Brooke, but I don't know. It's close. You know, it's close. Anyway, yeah, Brooke, Brooke, um, can't, Brooke, Brooke can't play 10 games in a row without being hurt. And that's the, and, and that and that yeah. right there is what the problem is. Some people say if healthy, That'll he's the it. better. But you have to add that as part of it. You know what I mean? Like, he's never always healthy. So that's yeah, part of the issue. True. There. That's true. And his last birthday shout out is a rest in peace shout out to one Sean Taylor. Uh, who was born April first oh, at eighty three? Sean Taylor, man, rest in peace to you, good brother. Uh, you guys remember Sean Taylor? Oh, of course, man. That's my guy. But, but you, I mean, see, that's some of some of the, two of the best plays I've ever seen uh, in college football by a defensive player were made by Sean Taylor uh, in in the championship run. I mean, just a great player. And then you know he was when he was with the uh, the football team of uh, Washington D.C. Yeah, he, uh, he was on his way to becoming like the, when everything happened. He was he was actually hurt. He was he was uh, leading the NFC in interceptions. I think he had I think he had five or six, and mm -hmm. he was he was just really elevating his game. He was starting to become, you know, that that top you know the top player at his position. So I mean it's, I mean the whole situation is just unfortunate. Like he was only home because he had he had got hurt. You know, that's yeah. the only reason he was in, even in Miami, and he was getting everything straight. He was getting all the negativity out of his life. So for now, mm -hmm. all that to happen is just a, just a sad, sad situation. Definitely. Definitely hey, a sad story. Don't man. Don't yeah, so, man. Sure. I, yeah, that's all I really have, man, because I agree with everything you said. He was on his way. We don't know how good he could have been. You know what I mean? Like We, we just don't know how good he could have been. Um, But, you know, with that being said, man, rest oh. in power to that good brother, man. Those Always are the birthday shout-outs. Always, 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 always. But those are the birthday shout outs, man. Before we move into some more topics, let me Yay! tell everybody how to get in touch with us. You can check out our website at warroomsports.com. While you're there, be sure to sign up for the War Report. That's our newsletter. Click on the Contact Us tab to send a message to us about our company, our show, or to inquire about sponsorship and advertising opportunities. For general inquiries, email us at info at warroomsports.com. While you're browsing the site, click on the memorabilia tab. You can buy some War Room Sports merchandise. Click on the blog tab to read our latest sports articles in the All is Fair in Sports and War blog. And then click on the respective icon tabs to like our Facebook page. You can follow us on Twitter, subscribe to us on iTunes. You can watch our webcast at War Room Sports TV or WRS Podcast Network. We have all of our several shows, including the fellas with me this evening, Tissue and the Tape. You can also download our free War Room Sports mobile app right from the website. Everything on the go. 
Join us now in the JW Philly Realty chat room. That's at blogtalkradio.com slash the war room. To enter the chat room, just sign up for a free profile on blogtalkradio.com. If you don't want to create an account, you can sign in through your Facebook or Twitter accounts. And while you're at it, click follow to get updates and reminders about the show. We'll be taking questions and reading posts from Facebook, Twitter, and the chat room during the show. To call in and speak with us, dial the Digital Extreme Technologies hotline. That's 323-410-0012. Press 1 when prompted. If you're already listening from your phone, just press 1 if you want to, you know, holler at us and let us know what's going on. Whether you think Lou Chris is, uh, you know, um, the, the male Missy, that's just kind of not, nothing against Missy because Missy's a legend. But damn, survive. No, just, if you want to talk about anything, just call in and chop it up with us. But, um, <laughs> you know, two, three, four, one, zero. Peter the MMQB here, and you're listening to The War Room at the War Room Sports Podcast Network. Shout out to Peter King. But uh, let's jump into some, um, you know, some, uh, some more sports topics. And these hot topics are brought to you by Audible. If your schedule is too hectic to read as much as you want, try audio books and kick back and let someone else do the reading for you. All you have to do is visit Audible and sign up for a free trial at audibletrial.com slash warroomsports. Just by signing up there, you get your free audio book. Right now, I'm reading a ratchet hood novel known as Animal. Um, I go through a phase where I read everything from sports, biographies, business books. Uh, I just finished a real estate book called um, Hold by uh, Gary Keller. So now I'm into a, a, a hood novel. Um, called Animal. So I'm, I'm all over the place with Audible. But listen, audibletrial.com slash warroomsports, you get you a free book. I know that Phil Maddock is a huge fan of Audible as well. What you listen to? Absolutely. Uh, um, what you rocking with right these now, days? Right now, I'm into a Dean Koontz book that's that's very, very dope. Um, if you, if you, I don't know if, if you uh, if you rock with uh, Dean Koontz, but uh, definitely. definitely check him out. Uh, the Fun House is the name of the book, by the way. Uh, definitely. It's, it's one of his older ones, but it's one that, that I have uh, unfortunately overlooked. And I got I got put onto it uh, by the champ, uh, Mrs. Wilson, and it's it's very 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 good, worth the read or the list. Yeah, he, I ha I have like all his books in my wish list, man. So for those who don't know, Audible literally has a half million audio books. So audibletribe.com slash warroom sports and thank Audible for their support of the War Room. Now, um. On Worm Sports TV, we had Savad join us this past week to talk some baseball. Savad's a baseball fan. Phil, are you in the baseball at all? Uh, that would be a big negative. <laughs> I, I, I'll say this. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm in the baseball. Or I'm one of those dudes that don't get into it until about uh, Halloween. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, respect little... <laughs> I respect nah, that. I respect that. I get into it. I, I, I when the playoffs start, though. When the, I get into it when the playoffs start. No, I respect the honesty because here's the thing, right? Here's the thing, right? I, I love. I, I grew up honestly as baseball wing being. I don't want to say my favorite sport because basketball to like all of us was damn near religion. But in terms of as a fan, just going to watch a sporting event, I always thought baseball was the best live sport, and I enjoyed yeah, it's a great it. Great sport like, to watch. Great sport to watch live. As I get older live, now, yes, and you have so many, you have so many things to do, and you're so busy, it's like it's difficult to. I can't watch it on TV. It's not a great TV sport to me. Right. So I agree with you. But it's something about the baseball, like towards the end of the season and the pennant races. And then when it jumps into the playoffs, it like everybody elevates their game. Because let's face it, with 100 million games to play during the course of the season, like not too many guys play hard every day. Let's just keep it honest. But when it starts to get towards the end of the season and do step their games up, that's when it becomes a, a interesting sport to watch on a television. It's always amazing. live. Yeah, man. But uh, so, but Savad joined us live to, uh, to kind of give his um, – his division winners and uh, you know wild card teams or whatever, but just briefly uh, tell the people out there who may not have watched the video yet because I know they're going to watch it after hearing this uh, segment. Uh, Savad, who do you have as your uh, division winners? Um, you can start however you want, nationally or Americanly, in the wild card teams coming out, and you know just some thoughts on this upcoming season. Well, just just real quick, you know, I just heard you guys talk about baseball uh, like it's not that sport, and I don't appreciate when I hear that <laughs> just because you know. I'm just <laughs> I don't think there's there's much better in terms of it, it being, um, you know, America's favorite pastime. I don't believe that's the case. I think it's the NFL now. But, um, you know, baseball, there's something to be said about being able to kind of just turn turn on the game on a Sunday afternoon in the summer, you know, uh, with, with some barbecue. And, you know, if you drink beer with a beer and just kind of just kick back, it's a very relaxing sport, if nothing else. Um, you know, you get to the, you know, third and fourth innings of a game, you can kind of just kick back 
very conversational sport when you're at the ballpark. Good, good sport to, you know, take a business meeting at or, you know, try to smooth a client. So uh, you don't really have to pay attention as much in the beginning of it as basketball in the NFL. You feel like you're missing something. Uh, so it does have its merits. Uh, to, to, to jump right into uh, the predictions, uh, I always like to start with the senior circuit because I'm a big NL fan, uh, National League stand-up. Um, <laughs> just, just real quick, uh, NL East, uh, Washington Nationals uh, running away with that. Um, you know, one of the best pitching staffs that we've seen since uh, the 2011 Phillies. Uh, you know, you got to give props to the Nationals for that. I have them winning the East. Uh, the Central, uh, St. Louis Cardinals, uh, which I mentioned before in the video, uh, they're much like the Spurs or the, the Patriots. They just always find a way to, to be relevant and competitive uh, no matter what the era is. So, uh, you know, Cardinals uh, winning the, the Central. And then in the West, the Dodgers. Dodgers look like they're going to continue to, to – to their do- not want to say dominance, but at least continue to lead out there in the West. Uh, wild card. I have the uh, Pirates and the Mets. So looking forward okay. to a great uh, NL, you know, NL season. Uh, they'll probably win the All Star game again if that matters to anybody. And uh, yeah, you know, just uh, looking forward to it. Okay, okay. Um, now I know that you are a Phillies fan, right? Yeah, huge Phillies fan. Um, you know, I, I was in the city for for eleven years, and uh, I I went to at least you know, 20 to, to 30 games a year. Um, I, funny thing about it was I, I became a Phillies fan off of a bet in 1988. Bet my dad that they were going to beat the uh, Atlanta Braves when we live in Atlanta and uh, for the summer. And they won, and that's been my team ever since. So, you know, I'm, I'm always always going to rock with the Phillies since 1988. So, All right, uh, now I'm also a Phillies fan, field. right? I'm also a Phillies yeah. fan, right? And I'm going to give my picks. Um, but the one thing I do want to say as a prediction, I think – as a huge Phillies fan, I think the Phillies will lose at least a hundred games this year. Oh no! You're taking yeah. over or under, over or under on that. You said over. I'm sorry, over under on what? Over, over or under on the Phillies losing a hundred games. Uh, I think we talked about it on the show. I, I thought about it a little bit more. For them to go sixty-two and a hundred would be kind of tough. Um, the average team doesn't do that. I'm gonna say. Uh, under 100 losses, man. 68 wins, maybe 70. <laughs> That's damn near. If they get 68 wins, they're going to be, what, 68 and, like, 94? <laughs> yeah, so I mean, almost... it's still trash. It's still, it's still trash, <laughs> but it's just not, like, historically bad. They're not that bad. I got you. I got you. I got you. Real quick, though, I also had the Nationals running away with that division with the Phillies losing 100 games, as I just predicted. I mean, you know, it pains me to yeah. say that, but they're terrible. They're just terrible. St. Louis Cardinals, how can you not pick the Cardinals? Um, you know, the Cubs are on an uh, upswing. It's going to be an interesting division, but I have the Cardinals winning it, um, just to keep it short. Uh, also, I also have the Dodgers winning it. I have the Dodgers advancing all the way, and I'm going to put it out there now. I think the Dodgers are going to win the World Series, but, uh, I mean, they paid enough money at this point, so, right? So, the Dodgers' payroll was through yeah. the roof, you know what I mean? But um, my surprise wild card will be uh, – the Padres. The Padres will also make it uh, as a wild card team out of there. And, you know, so anyway, let's jump over to uh, Phil. Do you have any opinions on baseball or you want to give any predictions or you just want to yeah, fall I back? Mean, I, I I, I, this, this is what I'll say. I follow baseball all year long. I just don't watch the games that much. Gotcha. I'll, catch, I'll catch games here and there, but I, I'm always following um, just as a sports fan. So I do have, um, very similar to you guys, I have the Cardinals. Uh, as Bob said, they are the baseball equivalent of the Spurs. So I have the mm-hmm. Cards. I have the Dodgers. Um, I have the Nationals. They, they, I think they are probably the best team in the NL. Uh, and then I have, and then I have, even though uh, McClutchin cut his hair, I still have the uh, the Pirates uh, make get one of those wild card spots. And then the. Uh, the Cubs, man, I, I want to see. I want to see them win just to see what would happen in Chicago. Chief Keith might put his gun down if if <laughs> Chicago could win. So. <laughs> you know, it would be a, it would be a good day in the world. Yeah, I, I, been I, outside. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so Bob, did you give us your wild card out of the uh, NL? Yeah, I had the Mets and the Pirates. 
Okay, they mentioned the Pirates. Yeah, the Padres was my, was my um surprise one, and I think I'm going to actually uh, switch and go Pirates as well because um I think on the on the actual um the, the broadcast I didn't go Pirates. I know I did at the Padres. I think I'm with the Padres and Cubs, but I'm, I'm gonna go with the Pirates as well, like because the Pirates are you know up and coming team, but. We all agree pretty much um, in terms of the division winners in the National League. Now, this is where it gets yeah. interesting when you go over to the American League. Let's see if we agree on this. Phil, I'm going to start with you. Who do you have winning each division in the American League? All right. I got, I got, I got the Orioles in the East. Uh, okay. the, the Tigers holding down the, uh, the Central Angels because, I mean, come on. Angels are yeah. pretty official. Um, then I got, I got the Mariners. Uh, grabbing one of those wild card spots in mm-hmm. the Cleveland Indians, because how how great would it be to have Chicago versus Cleveland in the World Series? That would that would be like the greatest thing ever. Nobody would watch it except for Cub fans, but Got you. it would be great to see just for baseball. All right, now um, I'm gonna go real quick and then one goddamn hit. <laughs> goddamn hit. Don't worry, nobody's <laughs> listening anyway. <laughs> Yo, I'm gonna go with uh, American. <laughs> I'm gonna pick the Boston Red Sox to win this because they just got so much firepower. And they have the greatest pitching. They have firepower, though. I know that Survive disagrees with this, um, but I have the Rays finishing in last place in this division, and you know we'll get into that. Oh. Um, I got the Detroit Tigers um, winning the division, uh, but I also have the Chicago White Sox getting a wild card spot. Now, how about that? What if it was a Chicago Chicago World Series? Oh man. Oh. Um anyway. <laughs> that'd be crazy, right? Um I have Seattle winning that division with the other wild card going to the Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim. Um getting that other wild card. But that's my prediction right there. Now, Savad, I know that you're gonna beef with me about my American League East prediction. So give yours. <laughs> uh I got the Tampa I got the Tampa Bay Rays uh winning the NL East. Uh, I'm in the minority with this, but uh, as I mentioned on the, you know, on the um, inside the war room, uh, yeah, I just, I'm just a big fan of everything that they put together as far as well, the culture. I, I feel like just real um, quick, you, you mean the AL? Just real quick, you mean the AL East? You said the NL, but you mean the AL East? I got I'm you sorry. with you though. Yeah. Yo, Chuck, AL, it AL. must be on the pipe, right? The pin- <laughs> <laughs> this is my AL question East. to you, right? Before, before, before we get the rest of the American League picks, where are they going to get? The offense, their pitching is without a doubt probably one of the best in the entire the entire baseball. But I don't see them able to score runs. Yeah, I mean, it's it's uh, I'm banking <laughs> when every game one nothing, right? But that's Short what I was ball. saying. I mean, I'm, I'm banking on them them having some some luck. I mean, uh, Desmond Jennings is a guy who's kind of underachieved for the past couple of years. I'm looking for him to have a standout year. Uh, you know, and, and do some things that he was expected to do earlier. Uh, you still got Longoria there, of course, as everybody knows. You know, he's been the uh, perennial all star there. Um, Cabrera, Cabrera uh, Osdrabal, uh, Cabrera from, um, uh, from, from the Indians, you know, he's made his way down there. Uh, I just think it's just going to just be a defensive team that's in a lot of games late, and they're just going to just find some magic. Uh, that's the thing about the teams that find the magic, like the Royals. Like the Royals were a team that I was expecting to have, big, you know, do big things last year. And, you know, people were saying the same thing about them. How are they going to score runs? You know, they got a lot of underachievers. Mm-hmm. So you saw firsthand what it takes or, you know, what happens when magic happens uh, in baseball. So I'm figuring that's going to happen with the Rays. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, here's the thing about you picking that. Like you said, you are in the minority. So if it actually happens, you're going to look like a complete genius. And if it doesn't happen, nobody's going to remember anyway. <laughs> exactly. That's, that's the beauty of it. <laughs> Yo, yeah. do you do you think their magic their magic left with the coach leaving? So, um, I well, then um, uh, I think to an extent, yes, but he left a great culture there. Um, uh, their pitching their pitching coach Jim Hickey, and you know, he's one of the more respected guys in the entire sport. Uh, he's probably the best one in the AL. Um, just looking at you know what he's been able to do over the past eight years. And they just created a, a a whole philosophy and culture about pitching that's just far enough, just the best in my eyes. And you know, I I see that carrying over. You know, normally a pitching coach follows the manager, but essentially he's almost like the co-manager there in Tampa just because of how important his role is as a pitching coach. So, uh, you know, I I think 
Had he left, I wouldn't be saying that. But the fact that he's sticking around, it means a lot to me. So. Okay. All right. Gotcha. So what about the rest of the uh, the rest of the American League? Um, in the AL West, I have the A's uh, taking that. Um, you know, pretty handily. Uh, my my pick for the Tigers took a little bit of a hit with Verlander uh, here lately, having a little bit of uh, issues. He's not going to be uh, in the opening series, but he should be back for um, the the second week of the of, of the season. I still have the Tigers uh, in there. Um, as far as my wild card picks, um, I still got to go with the Angels. I think you know they they spend enough money to be around, and then uh, the Royals. Okay. Yo, and shout out also to Casey Mack, who is um, uh, at Casey Mack 38 on Twitter, who was with us. Um, he writes for our blog as well as uh, Between the Seams. Um, he was on there with us, and he picked the Royals to win the whole thing. But again, like I said, at KC Mack is complete bias because he's from Kansas City. So <laughs> you know, I just want to put that out there. But he did pick the Royals, so shout out to him. I know he's listening in. So, you know, just give you guys a little baseball preview. That's what we see going on. You know, um, looking forward to the season starting. But we shall see what happens. Let's jump into some NFL talk real quick. There are some punishments being handed down by Roger Goddell um, in the NFL this week. The Browns were fined 250k, and the GM Ray Farmer suspended four games without pay for texting his team personnel during the games in the 2014 season. <laughs> what do you guys think about this? Um, the, the GM sending text messages during the game about specific plays. Like, is is that is that like you know, control freak or what? Is is he lazy? Like, why don't he just do uh, what Jerry Jones does and just walk down? <laughs> you, know, just walk down <laughs> you know, like, why did you have to text? Um, you know, Jerry, you know, he, he's hands on with his, and you know, Al Davis, no doubt that phone. Um, yeah, but Jerry, Jerry, uh, Jerry also owns the team too, though. Yeah, that's true. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's just it's just another case of Cleveland being Cleveland, man. You know, it's just a sad town. Uh, as far as sports go, um, and you know, it's just anything that could happen bad to Cleveland normally happens. Um, so yeah, so it doesn't surprise business. me. It's kind of a hefty fine, I guess, in terms of the the infraction. I feel like with the way that technology is, like, what's the difference between texting or uh, i messaging or so he's basically you're saying he's ahead, he's ahead of his time right now. That's all. He's just he's just he's, he's too ahead of his innovator. time. Right now. He's an innovator. Yeah, you know, he's a, he's he's a, he's a, he's a, he is he is still the same guy that uh, that drafted Johnny Manziel. So I, I don't want to give him too much. That's props, true. But, yeah. This is true. Phil Maddox, what do you think about this fine and, and what he got for, for the whole story? I, I, I think it's dumb, man. Like like finding finding for for the text. Like, what, I mean, what did it did it really cause any harm to the game? I mean, the, the Patriots actually did something that affected the game. You know, but there's nothing. You haven't even heard anything. But this is is what they choose to send out fines for. And I mean, come on, man, it's it's just ridiculous. Yeah, he he violated the league's electronic device policy. I mean, he's just he's just a, he's just ahead of his time, yeah. man. Like you know, he he's, he's, why do they have? <laughs> <laughs> why do they even have a, a electronic device policy? Yo, that that's where I I want to know. Why do they even have that? Maybe he was he he act like he was playing Madden. He was trying to like you know pick the same play as the other team and whatnot. Who knows? <laughs> this ain't Tech Mobile. It's not <laughs> yeah, Tech Mobile. My bad. Yeah, Tech Mobile. You just get the the rush, you know, which doesn't matter if you had Jerry Rice, by the way. Um, or Bo Jackson. Bo Jackson. Yeah, Bo, nothing mattered if you had Bo Jackson. The, the entire game playing in the game against Bo Jackson was a waste of time. Like. You know, um, I a quick question off topic real quick. I know we've done this before, though. If you think about all the great video game players of all time, right? So you got, like, Vic on, like, Madden 04. You got Bo Jack. Who's the single greatest video game athlete off the top of your head? Oh, player 99. Uh, this <laughs> player 99, yo, on, on, on Live 95. On Live yeah. 95, yes, sir. Yeah, he was like Team Wolf. Yeah. <laughs> no doubt. Yeah. But, but listen, though, that also, wasn't the... also, also 98 Randy Moss, too. 98 Randy Moss was just like, that was like way. He was. It, it wasn't even Bo... like, even EA came out and was like, yo, we just kind of OD with this. Yo, but Bo was a beast, too. Bo was in the, Bo was in the, Bo was in the upper echelon of that. You got to be in the top five. Oh, tech, oh tech, Bo, Bo is arguably the greatest video game villain 
ever like he, if you weren't using the Raiders, he was a villain. Let's be clear, like cause you, you couldn't <laughs> yo, stop him. Yo, you know, catch you to run to the house with Bo before they run in the end zone, turn around and run back, and then run back. Yeah, like, yeah, yo, just straight on being with it. Yo, many Nintendos have probably been shattered because of Bo Jackson and the Raiders on Tecmo Bowl. Yeah. <laughs> But listen, though, let's talk about another find. That ha- let's talk about another find that happened in the NFL. Um, Savad, you mentioned that you did stay in Atlanta for a while. So um, just because of that, we're going to make this your team, even though we know it's not your team. But, you know, you said you stayed there. So now this is on you. <laughs> um, the Falcons were fined 350 k and forfeit a fifth-round draft pick in 2016 because they got caught piping crowd noise into the Georgia Dome for the past two seasons. How pathetic is this? <laughs> <laughs> now, now, mind you, when I was in Atlanta, you know, I was eight years old, and um, they, the Falcons were a trash team back then, uh, and they're still a trash team now. I don't care how how many times you told me that Matt Ryan is an elite quarterback, but um, Ooh. yeah, it's just it's just sad just to just see uh, they they have some really good fans down there. They have some really loyal fans, and I don't feel like their fans need to to have crowd noise pumped in in order for there to be some type of advantage you know leave that for the patriots man like this you know that that type of stuff is just you know is is stupid to me so the fine um it doesn't make much sense either why is it a fifth round pick in not this year's draft but the following year's draft like there's no consistency with these fines a lot of times they just make stuff up just to not piss off the owner none yeah it's like like you you got to I think they got a prices right, right, uh, like wheel back there, and they just spin it and see, you know, see what it lands on. Yeah, it's dumb. The filmatic. What you think about this, man? Yo, I, I just want, I just question were, were they pumping in the opponent crowd noise? Because I mean, it didn't help them win games. So I mean, yeah. like, whose crowd noise were they pumping in? I mean, the the uh, to Bob's point, Atlanta has always been bad from from when they were. Amazingly, in the NFC West, to when they got put in the NFC South, they had their their, their Super Bowl, you know, year the Dirty Birds year, got blasted. I'm sure you remember that well. Absolutely. You know? uh, and, th- and th- <laughs> by the way, thank God for the Dirty Birds though, because I'm like I'm gonna keep it a bean. I'm a huge Broncos fan. I don't think we would have beat Minnesota. And Minnesota shot to Gary Anderson. You know what I'm saying? Because he gave us that Super Bowl because he missed that field goal. My man was perfect all season. And missed that field goal because that Minnesota yeah, team, like that, might have been one of the best teams to never win a chip because they were deadly. I, I <laughs> once they agree, won, man. once uh, the Dirty Birds won that game, I start partying like, oh, we got it now. Yeah, it, it, that's one of those things when you when you know that you just won the Super Bowl based on the opponent and the, like like the like for like eight years the NFC knew whoever yeah, they played in the NFC yeah. championship was the Super Bowl. That was that was a bowl. Yeah, you're right. I was so disappointed to see Atlanta in there because I really I wanted to see like a I thought I was gonna get like a 42, 49, like Super Bowl straight shoot all and <laughs> just a straight shootout and you know I just to see Red Moss and Chris Carter on media day would have been worth that that because you know it was absolutely so shout out, shout out to Gary shout out to Gary Anderson man <laughs> but no man it, it, it's so that I mean that's fine. It's like Bob said, it's so inconsistent. But I pumping the crowd noise, I, I, I don't know what they were hoping to achieve by doing it. It is my thing. Like, was it gonna make the 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 offenses uh false start? I mean, did they have did they have a irregular amount of false start in the Georgia Dome, like the opponent? <laughs> I, I, I just I just don't understand what was the purpose of it. Like did it it didn't help them win any games. They what they won four games last season? You, know? you want more. You want. You want more investigation. You want some more investigation into this. You want to know really what's really going on, right? <laughs> yeah, I, I just want to know what was the purpose. I mean, so, I mean, even though it's not until 2016, a fifth round pick. I mean, you get great players in the fifth round. You know, a lot of yeah, a lot of great yeah. players come out of the fifth round. So, I mean, it, it will hurt them. I mean, they they probably wouldn't have drafted a good player with the fifth round pick, so it may not hurt them. But you know, normal teams do. You know, normal teams. All right, let's move ahead, though. I, ha- I have a question for you guys. Jameis Winston says that he's the best player in the entire draft. Um, <clears throat> he's never one who, who is shy of confidence. Uh, but if you were the Buccaneers, do you take him at one if you're running the Bucs? You're the GM of the Bucks. You know, you just got fined 
for Texan uh, plays, but you still have the first pick of the draft. And Jameis Winston is on the board, the guy who doesn't lack confidence. Um, what do you think about his assessment and would you take him? Um, I'm just going to be brief because Phil's an NFL guy out of us too. Um, mm -hmm. He's not the best player in the draft. If you ask me, it's either uh, Leonard Williams uh, from USC or um, – I'm I'm a real big uh, Melvin Gordon fan, uh, even mm -hmm, though he yeah. didn't really show up toward the end of the year like they needed him to. But those those guys are head and shoulders better. Uh, you know, running backs are devalued nowadays. But I would take both of them before I would take Jameis Winston. He he, I'd take Mariota now, and and maybe somebody ooh. else before I would take him. He he has no place as a now, face of but here's my question franchise. Then. You say that even though you admit that running backs are devalued because of the way the game is played, and also the quarterback position. Um, you know, it's it's such an important position. So that kind of changes the dynamic. Like you can have a guy who's a better player, but you know what I mean. Like let's just say that Jameis Winston, if you're rating him between one and ten, he's a uh, eight as a quarterback, and then you have a nine as a running back on the board. You're going to take the quarterback. You know what I mean, I'd rather have a quarterback who's an eight than a running back as a nine. Like I just would because he's a quarterback. So Jimmy, that Jimmy, dynamic doesn't this. change. Let me ask you this. If you're at the airport and you're about to board a plane, and you know how you sit there waiting for the board or whatever. Mm -hmm. And you know how somebody might be like, uh, yo, I'm about to go to the bathroom. Can you watch my bag? If it's Jameis yeah. Winston, would you watch Jameis Winston's <laughs> bag while he went to the bathroom? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the wrong person to ask that. I don't trust the soul, but I, I get the point you're trying to make. I definitely get the point you're trying to make. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you closely follow football, college football, and NFL. What is your opinion on Jameis Winston and his assessment as being you know, the best player in the draft? And would you take him? I, I don't think he's the best player in the draft. I, I, think, he's, I think he's the best quarterback in the draft. That okay. being said, Tampa Bay is in a no-win situation. Absolutely no win. As most people with the number one pick are, you know, you're very rare. I mean, you get the Andrew Lux or the Peyton Manning's, and you know, it's it's a it's a good look. But more more often than not, especially in the last ten years or so, the number one pick is uh -huh. not not really what's up. I personally would trade the pick. Okay. I would, I would trade because there there are a lot of people that really would would pay to get that pick. You can still mm -hmm. get a solid quarterback, you, but you can get a – Tampa needs a lot of stuff. They need – I mean, they need a quarterback, but they need a lot of stuff. So yeah. you can get multiple players to fill those needs. You can, you can rock with a veteran. You can develop one of the younger quarterbacks. You might even be able to – you can move back and probably – and probably if you really wanted to, you could probably get Mariota, you know, and move back a couple spots and then pick up a few more picks. So, I mean, mm -hmm. if you really wanted to go that way, I, I I don't trust him off the field. Unless they got – he has to have, like, the – he has to have, like, Mr. Belvedere, like, <laughs> like off the field. <laughs> like, I, like, walking with him. I, I, I Fonsworth think, I, Bentley. Yeah, yeah, he need, he needs a chaperone at all times. So like, he need to go from a G I, to I, a gent. Yeah, <laughs> because, because – <laughs> Yo, because I, I, I think on the field, he, he's he's the he's very skilled, and I think he's actually going to be a pretty good player. He's going to be like a better version of Byron Leftwich, which is I, I don't know if that's necessarily a good player, but he's going to, he's going to he reminds me of Byron Leftwich, just more athletic than Byron was. It's but funny because Byron wasn't looked, Byron wasn't terrible. He wasn't terrible. But every time I think no, of Byron, he, he I think of his college career. I would think his college yeah, career. Yeah, we had broken leg. Yeah, that's like that was the greatest thing I've ever seen. You know, not, I mean, I'm exaggerating, yeah. but you know, that that's what I think of when I think of Byron Leftwich. I want to think about yeah. his NFL career. <laughs> but that's what I think of Jameis. I, I, he's very much like Byron Leftwich, and even in like the way he plays, but he's more athletic than Byron was. He can move a little bit more. He he's like a lesser version of Ben Roethlisberger. When I see him, that's who I see. Mm -hmm. I see like I see like young Ben Roethlisberger. You know, like right fresh out of uh, Marshall. That being said, something that something has to be said though about the fact that he only lost one game as a starter in two seasons. That's what I'm. That's what I'm give, saying. You got to give him some props for that. 
and he's a winner and he he definitely knows how to persevere he kind of blocks a lot of things that he has going on off the field which is several uh out and you know when he's between those lines you know he's making the big time throws he's keeping his team encouraged and you know he's definitely exuding a lot of skills uh that are, that are beyond yeah. his IQ uh on paper but uh this, <laughs> this trust this trusting him otherwise I just would just be extremely apprehensive I just wouldn't want to risk him being you know point. uh the the purple drink monster part 2 I I get your point and I appreciate your story too the whole the whole uh the whole uh, airport thing that was pretty good, man. I like I like that. Pretty good. <laughs> good job, man. But um, with that being said, sticking sticking uh, with the draft, um, Marcus Mariota says he's not going to attend the draft. There's a lot of guys starting to do this now. Is that a new trend? So if you if you were drafted or you had a kid that was being drafted, would you attend the draft or you like to throw the party at home? Oh no, we're going to the draft. Once in a lifetime thing, oh. baby. We, oh yeah, we we, we're it. there. Times Square or where or uh, Chicago United or, Center, wherever. We in there. Yeah. Gotcha. So what's up? What do, you th- what do you think about this new trend of guys just saying I'm not going? Like, you know, they they, they throw, you know, a party at the crib. No, no nobody yeah. wants to be Aaron Rodgers. They don't want to they don't want to have that <laughs> I always remember Aaron Rodgers because that oh, was he that yo, was Steam was coming out of his so ears, yo. Steam was coming out of mine because we didn't draft him. But that's <laughs> he wanted to be, how about that he, uh, he wanted to be a niner. That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Tell me about it. Shame on y'all, Phil. Yeah, I know. We we let Nas down. (laughs) 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 But um, But you said you you guys going. You guys are going. Yeah, man. Yo, nobody wants to be that have that look on their face or or like uh, what was my man that was there? Two days, Geno Smith was there. Yeah, you know he he was there the day two. He came back like it was still (laughs) with like. Like, I don't even think yeah. he left. I think they just locked him in there. It's like, all right, we'll see you tomorrow, you know, turned them off and <laughs> <laughs> walked out and then, you know, started part two. But from, from a fan aspect, it doesn't matter to me if they're there or not because they're going to have 50 cameras in their living room anyway. So True. I'm watching it on TV. The only thing that I won't get, I won't get done, the, the Eagles fans doing Donovan McNabb, <laughs> you know, that that's one of the most yeah. priceless draft moments, you know. I mean, um, they want to boo regardless so, whether he's there or not. It might be know, worse. It might yeah. be worse if he's home, though. It might be worse if he's home and his whole family's around him. Like, cause you know, when you go to the draft, only a certain amount of people can sit there with you. But when you got like third cousins and everybody at your crib and y'all turned up, you know what I'm saying? Like, yo. No, but you you don't feel it like when you're in person, though. Like you, he felt it all on the end. He's like, I mean, it was it was like you could feel it through the TV. And then or yeah. or Eli Manning, Eli Manning when he got drafted and it was plain to everybody in the world that he did not want to be in San Diego. Hit the he already has that look on his face anyway. Look, that man. Eli look. <laughs> you may, you may, well, well, you, or you can still end up like Joel Embiid, who wasn't at the uh, NBA draft, and, you know, he still had that face that's floating around. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, you can, get, you can get caught either way, man. But it's an interesting trend. Hey, Jim. Hey, Jim. Hmm. Then somebody showed him showed him a, 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 a picture of his, uh, his bush hut in Cameroon. Then he said, oh, let me stop. Let me stop playing with y'all. <laughs> He said, let me, let me be great, oh, man. He said, let me be great, man. He had a moment. He had, he had, a, he had, he had a first world moment for a second. And then he first back world. And he oh. said, oh, oh, hold Not on. Not a first world moment. <laughs> yeah. It's a face. Oh, man. Yo, uh, listen, oh, um, wow. speaking of Joe M B, like, although we weren't really speaking to him, but uh, the final four, the final four is set. What do you guys think about this year's uh, tournament? And um, how do you feel about the teams? Uh, <laughs> well, uh, as as my uh, my fellow partner just uh, exclaimed in agony. Um, uh, for those who don't know, I, I am a I'm a Duke Blue Devil uh, diehard fan uh, since 1989. Uh, huge fan mm. of the Devils. Um, I'm looking for them to uh, for coach. Coach K to go eight and one versus Izzo instead of seven and one uh, and advance to the game on Monday. Um, looking for Kentucky, uh, they they look pretty unstoppable, but I think Bo Ryan and those guys are going to do some things to make uh, Towns uncomfortable. I think uh, the Fighting Irish left a lot on the table with uh, just not double teaming double teaming uh, Towns and making some of those guys like Lyles and Booker and uh, the Harris twins make some shots on the outside. I think mm-hmm. there's 
they're going to make them do that uh, on Saturday, Saturday night. Uh, he won't be just be – he's not going to be able to go over his shoulder and just lay the ball in like he was doing. They're too good, man. Notre Dame. Yeah. Now, so, my question is this, though. Um, is, that, is that your Duke fandom talking? Um, or, or you really think that? Because yep. it sounds to me like you're trying to you're trying to you're hoping that you're you guys to don't have to play happen. Kentucky. Yeah, that's what it sounds to me like. You don't you don't want to play Kentucky. No, I do though because the, uh, so far, the only thing that I've heard about Duke and Coach K so far is they had the sweetest uh, road to the to the Final Four and they didn't play anybody and you know they haven't done the things that uh, that would garner the respect of you know Carolina fans not only but. Just uh, fans in general saying Duke hasn't done what you know what's needed to be done to make the Final Four with the sweet draw. So um, I'm looking forward to uh, to Duke beating Michigan State and facing Kentucky. I just don't know if okay. it's going to happen. So you and you and your uh, your Ric Flair, John, you got to beat the best. You got to beat the best, right? You got to. I mean, you want the respect as, as much as I, I I like Coach K getting his uh his fourth championship versus Butler. Like I, I would have liked for that to have been you know uh, Louisville. So, but you gotta admit you know, though, this, this, their their road to this point, when you look at everybody else, it is a little sweet. Nothing wrong they, with that though. You only can play who's in front of you. You only can play who's in front of you. So I'm not knocking team that. all year, Jim. They're the second best team all year. Like when you go back and look at this year, yeah, Virginia was was number two in the rankings, but and Duke was a, they they beat Wisconsin. You know, they 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 had a lot of tough road wins. Uh, as far as no, on they, no, they have a they have a very talented team and and young Duncan, as I call him, uh, you know, I'm impressed with his game, you know. So yeah, they have they have a very talented team. That's 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 without question. Um, yeah. For me, this entire tournament, as every tournament, is exciting. It's just it's, it's exciting. It's one of those things where it's like every year I'm just waiting for like you know the upsets not to happen. It's like it can't it can't happen every year, but every year it seems to be magic. Like it just seems to be magic every March. It was pretty so, chalk though. Getting three number ones. No, no, it it is you know, it, it still it still was chalk, but you still you still have Michigan State making their run. And even the games in which the chalk won, uh speaking of Kentucky, that Kentucky Notre Dame game was amazing. Just amazing to watch the yeah. entire game. Like oh, the, you know, the yeah, intensity or what game. have you. Yeah, so even though you have chalk in terms of what's there, the games were phenomenal. Um, as yeah. always. Uh, yeah. In, term, in terms of this final about that game, mm-hmm. I was going to say the, the one thing about that game, though, uh, uh, my man Grant, he, he probably took three of the worst um, shots of the weekend consecutively to end that game. I wish they would have. Oh, no, no, yeah, we, we, yeah I, I, was, I, was, I was talking to, like, that would be awesome, like, a, uh, you know, a private chat or whatever during the game. And I'm like, yo, this dude, uh, he thought his name said Jordan the Pippen and forgot it said Grant in the back. He was playing hero <laughs> ball at the end. <laughs> Like they executed yeah. all, they executed all game. They they stay within their system, and at the end, he just wanted yeah, to be a hero. Ball. He started playing hero ball. Yeah. I'm like, wow. Yeah. But um, you know, it's funny if you watch Kentucky play all year. That's the one thing I could say about them is they stick they stick to the script because they played a lot of teams that had a lead that that were right there with them at the end. But all those teams seem to do the same thing. Somebody plays hero ball. They 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 go without what they forget what they did the entire game to be there. I saw when Kentucky mm-hmm. played Georgia. Um, it was somebody else they played a game, a close game with the overtime. I forgot I who it you. was, but yeah, oh, same you. thing. Like all game, you do one thing that's working and then it gets to the clutch, but Kentucky sticks to the script. So you got to give them props for that. I think I'm like everyone else in the world who wants a Kentucky Duke final. I have no horse in a race. Um, I find it very difficult personally to root for college teams. I don't know why I just do, especially like a school I never went to. I just find it hard to root for college teams. I just want to see good games. So I have no yeah. horse in a race. But I want to see Kentucky and Duke because I want to see, um, you know, uh, Ja, as Coach K likes to call him, um, you know, I want to see Ja uh, versus all these big guys. Because the thing about Kentucky is, it's like, who can play with them the entire game when you're bringing these seven footers off the bench? Yeah. You know what I mean? That's difficult. Um, like, you could beat them for a quarter or a half or whatever, but I thought, well, you start wearing out at the end. Jim, just like you mentioned, like I, I really don't like, uh, and still I'll tell you this too. Like I complain about the college game all the time. Like I'm not a big fan of college uh, basketball as I used to be. Uh, mm-hmm. Whenever you hear me talk about Duke, the next word that's coming out of my mouth is Coach K, and I probably just did it. When we <laughs> I, like I, I'm a, I'm like Pat Summit's my favorite coach of all time. Coach K is probably right there along with her. And, you know, just what they've been able to do with their programs, uh, Coach K continuing on his legacy. No, uh, I definitely I'm respect I'm a big it. fan of that. I respect so, it. I respect um, it because he graduates guys. Um, well, not anymore, but he for a long time, he had one of the better graduation rates. And his players yeah. love him. And 
you know, uh, they guys represent the university well. Some may say that's because I, they recruited certain type guys. Shout out to Jalen Rose. But, um, you know, <laughs> I, I, I definitely appreciate, like, who doesn't like to watch greatness? You know what I mean? So you like to watch no, greatness. I, I definitely respect it. I just, oh, yo. But then, but then on the flip side, on the flip side, Phil, on the flip side, I know you're a Carolina guy, but on the flip side, you have Coach Cal, who's like the evil empire. Like, he he does things his way. And he's had, like we talked about it earlier, he's had success at a couple different schools from UMass to Memphis to Kentucky. So I want to see that clash. Because <laughs> that's that's how they want to paint it. Coach K is the good guy versus like Cal, you know, the bad guy who just puts guys in the NBA and doesn't graduate his soul. Yeah. yeah. But, yeah. but the, the whole the, the whole thing is that me and Bob, we, we interact so much. But, I mean, not only because of the show, but just in every everyday combos and so for Duke to win would be the most agonizing thing. Uh, you, know, you, have, you have no idea the the just the the ramming. He wouldn't even have to. He 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 barely talks, but just the text that I would see. Oh, it would be disgusting. Well, see, well, the thing about, about me way. is I have a very sneaky style, and I'm very condescending. And I oh, yeah, um, you, 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 he's the worst. You like you like one of them MCs the that sends subliminal shots. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm very condescending, and you know, I'm just, I'm sometimes I'm not a pleasure to talk to when we, when, when it comes to things that I'm well, passionate. Well, about. also think about, also think about it at this, right? I think about like my brothers and my show, right? None of us really have any teams that have a natural rival. We all have our favorite teams in every sport, but none of them are like natural rivals. And even right. with you guys, if you look at you know baseball, basketball, whatever, football is not really that. But you talk about Duke and no, Carolina. No, we got a natural rivalry. Yeah. You, yeah, like what else? What Duke and Carolina, right? Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. But, but he, but but, and then we got the father son relationship with the Niners and the Chiefs. You know, <laughs> yeah, no, no, that's no shots, Jim. We we. No, we what, I mean, we it, we, we, we talked about no that. It, yeah, it's, that, no it's a legitimate. It's a legitimate. Like not not me and him, but the team because of how they get all the Niners players like after they're kind of done. Joe Montana, you know? Elvis Gerback. Yeah, I understand that. I understand that. Yeah. Well, listen I mean, though, real quick, real quick, before was, we move forward, we have a we got a call on the line. We got uh, somebody calling from Cali. We got the homie Rob, and I believe Rob is also a Carolina fan. Let me see what he has to say. Yes, Rob, my man there? Rob. What's up? What's up, man? Hey, so is your man a Carolina fan? Or he's a Duke fan. No, one, one. We have we have two. We have we're both. We have both both of the guys from Tissue and the Tape on. One is Carolina. One is Duke. That's what we're talking about. The natural rivalry there. Um, but we, oh, you're a Carolina man. guy. Yeah. I'm like the devil was a liar. So, anyways, man, <laughs> but, yeah, like, I do. I don't want to get to a tournament. Um, uh, Duke is looking. Duke is looking all right. They they need to improve on our defense. Michigan looks more hungry. I have no idea how Indiana got there. I think people sleep on Indiana. You mean they Wisconsin? Sleep on Decker. And Decker gets those open shots. That's the thing. You they said Indiana. Shooters. You mean you mean you mean Wisconsin, Rob? Right? Wisconsin. It, yeah, I'm sorry. You I'm said thinking. you said red. What the hell is Indiana? But listen though. Um, <laughs> but, uh, to to, yeah, to, to well, your yeah, point, to your point, Rob. Right? One thing I can say about this: you're a Carolina yeah. guy. So I was a Carolina guy. Carolina played well. I was actually shocked at how well they played because, um, you know, they made it to the Sweet 16. But even in that, like, even in the game that they lost, they played a great game. I don't like, want to start I, girly, know. but they call they call no fouls on Frank. They call none. Like he was killing, he was killing the big man. Wisconsin gets no fouls called on him at all. Frank is soft. Frank is a flopper. He's a seven foot sissy dog. I can't stand that dude. <laughs> so, so he gets all the calls so, though, and it, it it's very frustrating watching. Yeah, I'm, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I mean, they 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 got. The Carolina has hard work. I'll give them that. They always have hard work, but they can't close out games. Just like when they was, when they was up ten points against Duke, and they couldn't close the game. They couldn't. Well, for they one, for one, for one, your Blue Devils. I mean, not your Blue Devils, but your, your Tar Heels don't seem to make foul shots. They miss so many clutch foul shots this season. It's ridiculous. Um, we, but you gotta, you gotta give, uh, you gotta give Decker his props. He's out there looking like a young Keith Van Horn right now. Um, <laughs> Putting in work, Literally. but Rob, Rob, real quick, Rob. Before we get, let you go, let me ask you a question. How do you see this playing out with this Final Four? Man, it is looking 
with well, we already know Kentucky's going to win. That's just they're not. That's just how it is. Um, <laughs> Can't you Wisconsin no shot. Now with the Blue Devils and and Michigan State, the Blue Devils they great offense, and we don't know the, where they where they run their offense through Okafor, um, but. I don't know. I don't know if Michigan just looks hungry. I do not want to see him in the Final Four. I don't know who to root for. I I, I don't even want to watch the games compete against the Blue Devils. I don't even. I'm rooting for Michigan. Michigan, yo, I got. But, but I want to ask you a question. What do y'all that's think all about? Carolina, that's well, all Carolina bias right there, Rob. You, you you know that, right? You know that what you just said was all Carolina bias. It was not about who you really of think. Okay, all right. As long as you know that, as long as you know that, I respect that. I respect of course, that. I think. I think I think I think really I really to be honest I think Duke is is should put us off but we never known that game I think Duke should put us off but if it goes Duke against Kentucky it, it's just gonna be a fight Coach K yeah. not going is you know but but I, I want to ask y'all something what do, you, what do you guys think of Willie from Kentucky Some people are saying that he's the next Dwight Howard he can develop his offensive skills. Yeah, what do you think about the the two of the big men for Duke, Towns and, and Willie? Oh, you mean Kentucky? Um, well, Kentucky, my fault. I just yeah, from I from from what I, from from like everything I've been reading, I keep I read the draft. Uh, you know the prognosticators. I read them like you know often during this tournament to see how they change based upon playing the tournament. And it's kind of like remain the same that Parker is supposed to be the first pick in Towns uh, if he comes out, which is probably without question he goes to Kentucky. Is supposed to be number two. So that's another reason right there why I'm looking to see them guys match up in the finals because he's supposed to be the first two picks of the draft. Um, I think they have a lot of potential. I think that um, Okafor, Okafor, uh, or as Coach K calls him, Ja, I think that Ja, ja is supposed to be the, the number one pick. Ja, ja is supposed to be the number one pick, Ja and then Town. So I think that Ja is more polished than all the guys from Kentucky. But – those guys from Kentucky can ball, and their upside, you know, is crazy because they have the um, athleticism. Some of those guys can handle the ball as well, and it's just amazing to see, like, how athletic and, and you know, the size of those guys in Kentucky pause. But yeah, I do man. think that Ja, ja right now is, is more polished and more NBA ready. He's more NBA ready. Kali I, I, Stein, I like, though. I, I think he, he, he reminds me of Joe Kim Noah. But I think he has more mm-hmm. upside than Joe Kim Noah because he hasn't even learned how to play for real, for real yet. Like he's 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 going off athletic ability right now. He missed a lot of mm-hmm. last season with injury, and so th- I mean this is almost like his first full season of playing. So yeah. as he learns and he gets under some NBA coaches and hopefully he gets under the right kind of system that that'll that'll bring him up right. I think he can be a very very dominant player in the league defensively, and if he can get a good a good middle range jump shot, you know, mm-hmm. or a baby hook, he could be mm-hmm. tough. But I, I he reminds Phil, me a lot of Noah. Phil, Noah, let me okay. ask you this though. If if he dyes his hair blonde again, you still got that same assessment of him in the league? You know how wow. I feel about the hair, man. There's a lot of strength in the hair. You can't just go messing with it, man. You know, so I <laughs> not not for long. Mm-hmm. Rob, Rob. Well, Rob, you asked the question, so let me flip it back to you. Who do you have as being the best player? Like right now, you had the number one pick, and you've watched these guys in the tournament. Who are you going Okafor. with? Okafor. Okafor. Got you, got Okafor. you. Okay, that's what's his, up. Post, his post game is amazing. I really like watching him. Defenses can improve a little. Handling skills is coming up. Uh, free, three free throws can be adjusted, but uh, to me, he's one of the best players in, in college basketball. No doubt. Respect that. Rob, thanks for your call and thanks for your support as always, homie. See, All right, man. I, I always, All right, take it easy. I always look at that like it, it's easier to, to, to improve your offensive game than it is your defensive game because defense, you have to want to do it and it's it's a it's an effort thing. It's an athleticism thing. Yo, it's all about uh, effort. Offense is, it, yeah, it, but, but offense to me is more of a practice thing, you know. I mean, you have to have some skill, natural talent, obviously, but I think that I think you can work on your offensive game. Defense is is in most cases you either have it or you don't. You know you can perfect some techniques a little bit, but the great defensive players are usually have always been great defensive players. So quick, quick that, question, that right? Said, first pick, I'm still taking Ja. Ja, I'm taking Ja. Okay, we had a debate last week, right? 
um, who's the more successful college career between uh, Ja and Emeka, his older cousin, uh, even though they said they're like, you know, whatever, fifth, sixth cousin, whatever it is, who had the more successful? And some people actually said Ja because, you know, of his talent and the fact he's going to be number one pick, but they forget that Emeka was a number two pick. Won the chip. And also won a chip in college, you know what I mean? But, yeah. you know, Jaws right there with a chance to do it, man. But I, I think that the entire country is rooting for uh, Duke and Kentucky because this makes for the better story. You're going to get the good versus evil, the code, you know what I mean? Like, and then you're going to get all these seven footers flying around. It's going to be a good game. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, I just want to see a, a, a mass burn Leitner commercial where, where, uh, ah. where for the dude, <laughs> that, would, that would be awesome. You know, maybe, yeah. maybe maybe they can stop him from scoring this time. <laughs> <laughs> he had to th- he had to throw it out there, survive. You know, he's just taking a shot too. That's a little subliminal right there too. Oh, that's all good. He, yeah, he knows, a little, knows. Little, little subliminal, but um, yeah, man. So that, that's that's and the thing about it is we talked about that Kentucky and Notre Dame game, right? And that was an amazing game. Um, but quick stat of the week. Kentucky Notre Dame was the most watched college basketball game in cable TV history. The game averaged uh, 8.4, um, you know, 8.4, 16. So uh, about 14 million total viewers. And it peaked between uh, 10.45 and 11 p.m. Um, and the total U.S. rate, I'm looking at all the ratings here. 19.7 million was the total at its peak. And it's also the most viewed program in TBS history. What do you think is the reason behind this phenomenon? Like this game, particular game, like being so high rated? Because this this is like doing ratings better than some like you know, flagship shows on other stations. Well, what you said, Coug- man. Cougar Town's uh, series finale hasn't aired yet, so I think that's probably. Not <laughs> I mean, come on, it's it's CBS. Like, I mean, besides no, no, I, I, now, theory, that, that's one argument because that's that's one argument. But um, it, it did it did great ratings in itself. But to be TBS's highest rated show, you're saying basically like what the hell is on TBS? I can get you. Exactly. But in terms of ratings overall, just being a ratings goal, like what, what about that one game? Because Kentucky had other games that did good ratings, but nothing like this. Nah, it's it's the good versus evil. Yeah. It's Blue Bloods. Yeah. 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 And, and you have to look at it. Notre Dame has such a following, you know, um, even from, from football, even though they, they haven't been, you know, the same kind of powerhouse in basketball as they've been in football over, you know, the centuries there. Mm-hmm. The, and then also, also the, the one there, there was a huge, you should have saw, I mean, well, I'm sure you saw it on, on social media. Uh, there was this huge outcrying of people that wanted to see Kentucky lose to Notre Dame. Notre Dame was all of a sudden America's team. There was a hashtag for it and all this kind of crazy stuff. Like, Kentucky became this big bad monster, so you had that mm-hmm. aspect of it, and that made people tune in. And then, of course, you know ESPN hyped it up, and TBS and TNT and you know CBS, they all they all pumped it up too. So you combine all those things, and you you get that game. And then I think as it got close and it stayed close, more people started to tune in. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. Um... Now the thing about it is, I'm looking at like all the different shows that come on TBS, and everything damn near is reruns, um, you know, except for Cougar Town, yeah. of course. Uh, they got Seinfeld, Friends. By the way, How I Met Your Mother is better than Friends. A side note, but um, yo, and shout out Please. to Kenny, Kenny the Jet too. Shout out to Kenny the Jet who um found a way and and you know to get so much money from Turner Sports. He got his own reality show, which is uh on TBS. Meet the Smiths. Somehow, Kennedy Jet oh, wow. has become popular. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> the Carolina guy. But, um, yeah. you know, so they, 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 struck, they, struck, they struck gold with that, um, with that game. They had to remember. Yeah, TV, TBS's shows are terrible. Just want to throw it out there. Um, in the Final Four on TBS, like, why? That's my question. Why is the Final Four? Like, I understand they paid for the rights to it, but, like, Really? Why wasn't it yeah, on TNT? Because they're, they're trying to sell those. The advertisers, you know, pretty much are are trying to get, um, you know, that that viewership over to TBS. TNT is always going to do its thing. It has the NBA, and I think TBS is really trying to be that that, you know, as far as that Turner family, you know, that alternative, you know, to 
uh, TNT to be that powerhouse so that they can eventually have both the Final Four and then maybe even an NBA Finals for TNT one day. I feel you, but I, I, I look at it like this. TNT is already doing it, and I'm sure the advertising cost per commercial costs a lot more in TNT. So that means during, like, a big game like this, you can up it even more. So from a, from a business side, you, they probably would have made even more money. But, I mean, I, I guess I get your point where they're trying to bring up TNT. Yeah, yeah, trying to create the model. Yeah, twin brothers type thing. You know, yeah, you yeah. know. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, pretty good much, luck with man. that. <laughs> but if it's Duke, Kentucky, if it's Duke, Kentucky on Monday, it doesn't matter where where they play. They can play it on True TV. It's gonna it's gonna uh, <laughs> eclipse, it's gonna eclipse these yeah, numbers. Fine. You said it was nineteen point seven million total viewers. It, so you, be, you think you think close to twenty one? All right. So you think oh, that it's basically gonna get, it's gonna get up there? It's gonna be more than that. Yeah, I, I, it's I gonna be, be like twenty five. I agree because first of all, Kentucky's playing for history. People, people forget that they haven't had the loss all season yet, so they're they're playing for the national championship. They're also playing for history. Like, you know, let's not forget about that I, as well. Yeah, whether yeah. Duke is their, is their opponent or not, I I personally want them to do that. Uh, I'm not. I was never a fan of Bobby Knight, so him being the the last person to have an undefeated team just always bothers me. And it's been. Uh, what almost what it's been 25 years or almost mm-hmm. 25 years since mm-hmm. uh UNLV you know yeah. so when they when they had a chance and you know so I really would like to see them do that just just for that and then you know if they get a chance to beat Duke that's a that's an added bonus you know but yeah, let's not oh, let's, let's, let's not count out you know you know the Flintstones just yet you know because Tom Izzo is is a excellent coach. I know his record against Coach K is not the greatest, but seven is, Listen, or one in seven. Tom Izzo yeah. gets nothing but admiration from me because that team he got in the final. I don't even know how he got that team to the final. They don't have not one NBA player in that team. Like this is probably his most most impressive coaching job I've ever seen, and that's yeah. saying something considering you know he's he's a a, a champion. You know. Yeah, yeah. But, I, I told Bob. Like how how did the team please? How did that team win a? I still don't know how they won a championship, but this team just to be where they are is incredible. So yo, they don't have. In my opinion, they don't have one pro. They have guys that make it a tryout. They don't have one like solid pro in that team. And like yo, it's unbelievable, man. It's like he's playing with like seniors, and you know now when you call somebody a senior in college basketball, it's like disrespecting their game. Like yo, you a senior? But <laughs> it's, it's, it's just amazing, they man. Still make you? <laughs> yeah, for real. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's amazing, man. So shot the time is because he won already. Yeah, he won yeah. already. Oh, yeah, man. Especially since they get like they get like nine million dollars uh, for getting to the final four each school. So you know. Yeah, no doubt, no doubt. But real quick, I want to hear you guys' opinion on some uh, some NBA talk. Um, so uh, before I do that. Let me tell everybody to check out our website at www.warroomsports.com. I hate when I do that. Like, who says www? But anyway, go to warroomsports.com to call in and speak with us about any of today's topics. Dial the Digital Extreme Technologies hotline, which is 323-410-0012. Press 1 when prompted. If you're already listening from your phone, just press 1 if you want. To hey, what's happening, everybody? This is Jamel Hill, the hers from His and Hers on ESPN2, and you are in the War Room on the War Room Sports Podcast Network. Shout out to Jamel Hill, Michigan State grad, who's all excited about her team uh, being in the Final Four. Um, anyway, with that being said, uh, the NBA talk is brought to you by Fanatics. For the best in your favorite team's merchandise and apparel, shop Fanatics. Shopping Fanatics is easy. Just go to our website, which is warroomsports.com, and click on the Fanatics logo on our main page or on our sponsors page. You get the latest in NFL, NBA, NHL, MLB, NCAA gear, and more. Get you some MMA gear, too, if that's what you're into. Gentlemen, let's talk some basketball now. Curtis Blow, Curtis everybody. Blow. <laughs> yo, Curtis Blow. Um, <laughs> I try to listen to that now, right? And I'm like, yo, this is terrible. And but then when you think about it, like at the time, at the time, 
Like, he was that guy. I'm like, really? But it's terrible. Have you even tried to go back and send somebody from his area? There's no blueprint, yo. I, yeah, you're like, ha, 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 this is how I do. My man say, uh uh-huh. <laughs> Yo, but that, 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 was, that was the thing, though, because you got you to gotta realize, if you've never done something, if nobody has ever done anything no, I, I get it. before, you know, so you were just making it up as he went. You know, but now, it's t- you know. like listening. Listening now is terrible. And by the way, that's that's not just music. Um, I was I was watching like TV the other day, and um, I remember as a kid, like certain TV shows I watched, and I was like, "Yo, this show was amazing." Like, I tried to watch an episode of like Doogie Howser. It was terrible. Yeah, just terrible. You know what I mean? So bad. something. No, it, <laughs> some... I I feel you. Like like people are so much smarter now, but it's for for whatever reason we're so much dumber now as a, as people too like it's like we have so much information and so much technology but that people are actually not as smart as they used to be it's kind of, kind of <laughs> it's, <funny>. it's, <laughs> it's a weird dichotomy right there like we're, we're smarter yeah. but we're also stupid yeah, you know yeah it, it's it's amazing though like when you listen to some music or watch some shows you're like I used to like this you know what I mean but you know it is what it is man um first thing I want to do is give a shout out to the NBA players of the week which are uh, Brooke Lopez and Steph Curry. Now, Lopez led the Nets to a 3-in-1 week. Um, He had 28.8 points and 8.5 rebounds and 2.3 blocks. Now, the thing about this is um, we talked earlier about Lopez and his ability to to basically get buckets, but he's hurt. But this past week, he had an amazing week, 28.8 and 8.5. Um, now, Curry helped the Warriors go 4-0 with all four wins coming against teams that he'll probably play in the playoffs. He averaged 30 and eight. That's crazy. And shot 63% from three point line. Just Come crazy on, numbers, just crazy numbers. And to add it up, he ended up with the meme of the week as he just obliterated CP three. Um, <laughs> did you, I, I know at this point you, you guys have seen the play. Oh, of course. Of course. Yeah. What, what were your thoughts um, on the play when you first saw it? Watching it live was, was like one of those jump off your couch type of moments because, you know, as it's been documented now, this is maybe the third or fourth time that he's um gotten him, as as you might want to say. Yeah, what's uh, his beef with him? I, I think it's just more so that battle for uh, supremacy. Uh, the so, Western you know, State Western Farm or the NBA? Guard, you said, what's that? <laughs> I said, is that with State Farm or in the NBA? <laughs> That's a good one. I'm I'm not sure. I think I think we, we want to just keep it on NBA right now. Um, gotcha, you gotcha. look at a lot of the matchups with the with the Western Conference guards when they go against each other. Whether it's um, my man Mac Eleven down in, in Memphis when he goes against Tony Parker, um, you know, or uh, when when Chris Paul, you know, when he would go against Tony Parker, or when Darren Williams was in Utah, like. It's just whoever was the big dog, like in the Western Conference, is just this thing right now for the past maybe five or six years, where you know it's just one of those things. Like you, you, you go against that guy, you got to give him buckets, or you got to give him, you know, you just got to give him work. And Stephen Curry's really, you know, from the baby face thing to the oh, we don't know if his ankles are gonna hold up to the, you know, you never win anything in Golden State to oh, you know, he he's not really a point guard, he's a small shooting guard. I think he just. He has a little bit of a chip on his shoulder, and you know he he's he's flexing. You know, as they say, he, he's flexing this year. And um, when he sees uh, mm-hmm. Chris Paul, you know, he he sees blood. You know, he, he he's looking like. <laughs> yeah, he just he's just trying to um just trying to just stake his claim, and you know, I think we're all better fans for being able to see such uh you know such competition on that level. Um, and Phil, brought, you know, we talked about this earlier, but Chris Paul, he was like, okay, well, just because of that, Damian Lillard's about to get this work. It's like when uh, you get the beating from your mom and then you go beat up on your, your younger sibling, you know, because you're, right. you're angry. <laughs> he, he, gave, he gave Portland that, that 42 and 17 combo last night. So, you know. Uh, but you just, can't beat me. Just, that's, that's, that's what you say here. Exactly. But you can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yo. Exactly. No, but. Man, Steph Curry was just, he just told, he's like, I am the captain now. That's, that's basically what he told him. <laughs> he, he, he was like, or, or if you want to keep it hip hop, he's like, he's like, it's my block with my rocks. You know, he, he, told, yeah. he, he told him like, you know, I'm, I'm the best player on the best team. 
in the league, and I'm going to show you that I'm the best player on the best team in the league. So it's it's that's exactly what it is, and he's he's just uh, building his confidence for the playoffs because of what I said about them not being able to win in forever. You know, so I I think he and then he's also trying to make his case for the MVP. You know, because you know the beard is right there, and of course everybody know what Russ is doing. You know, yeah. pops out in OKC, so he he has to continually make a statement. And you know, those plays always get on Sports Center, and of course the hey. memes. Look at me, sure. <laughs> Look at me, sure. In the <laughs> That's right. Listen, speak, speak, you, just, you just brought up a point, Phil, and this is the question I'm going to ask you. And I know that you guys aren't prepared for this, so this comes off the top of your head, right? As soon as that happened, I'm on IG, and uh, you can follow us at World of Sports on Instagram, and I'm at JW the Blueprint, by the way. But um, the memes start flying off all crazy, and they were hilarious. But that's oh, how that- the world is now. Everything, Everything's memeable. What is the greatest sports meme that you've ever seen? Like after a play, and you just saw it, and like you're like, "Wow, they they went there." Like, what is the greatest one that you could think of on the top of your head? Oh man, it's it's two that I think of right off. It's uh, Manny Pacquiao uh, when he got knocked <laughs> out, and, 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 and you know he he was laying on he was laying on everybody like they had him all over the place. So that <laughs> that that to me that that's like my first like that's first classic really memes taking off. And then and then uh, Derrick Rose, you know, uh, uh, my, well, that's my guy because as a Bulls fan, that's my guy. But Derrick Rose is like the mean king, unfortunately, you know. So anytime they can, you know, they had him doing the stinky leg and that's like, no, oh, like the two the two that popped to me is when DeAndre dunked on old boy in Detroit oh. in the mean stuff. Brandon Knight. <laughs> that would yeah. that pops up the head. and also also this one, which really isn't funny because it's an injury, but RG three, like my man was playing Twister. Yeah, like, you know the old old brother. Twister comes, yeah, Twister, Twister always comes up. Twister, Twister um, is a good one for, for that. The, How about you, Lance Stevenson? Lance Stevenson is one that comes up just because. That's yo. That's mixed different. in with everything. That's that's like a meme yeah. that goes into other memes. <laughs> they had that in the Chris like Paul joint. <laughs> yeah, but, but like you saw him like blowing like the, the Titanic people, you know, like, <laughs> <laughs> on the ship. It just. Yeah, that 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 was that's probably my favorite one just because also like it was just so random. Like I know each one of you watched it just like I did. Like watching a game, like when they went back, it's like I can't believe he just blew in his ear. Like yeah, he was, like like that that was just amazing. So the fact that the internet got a hold of that really had to do thing. That's my favorite one for sure. That was internet platinum right there, yo. That, that, yeah, that yeah, definitely was. You know? It is some great, and that, yeah. I guess that's what you mean, Phil. Like we're so smart, but yet so stupid because people come up with some creative stuff. And you're just like, yo, how did you think of that? And you know, I'm I'm guilty of it too because I be making my own memes. But it's like, yeah, the man. world is just crazy. I, I, yeah, man, people can only use their powers for good instead of evil. <laughs> 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 I mean, it, it, it was, you know, it's but, like with great power comes great responsibility. Yeah, like we're yo, not, we're not, you, we're not using our great power responsibly. Yo, R. I. P. I'm not messing. Oh yeah, oh, yo, <laughs> yo, but CP3 definitely ended up. The, the memes were crazy this week. I mean, it didn't. It was less than five minutes after it happened, and I'm just like, yo, they already killed him. Yo, yo, like people be waiting, like, like yo, somebody's gonna get it, and this is what I'm gonna do when somebody gets it. Like, I, they gotta have them on deck, yo. They, it's crazy. Oh like, man, yeah. So that's that was some big news this week. Also, uh, Kevin Durant has bone graft surgery and is officially out for the season. So now everybody was talking about, um, you know, them possibly getting the eight seed and giving the Warriors problems. So how do you, what's your outlook now on the Thunder? Um, are they even going to make the playoffs now? And if they do, so, what are they going to do? So they, they have a murderer's row coming up. Uh, they got Memphis, who's actually reeling and try to hold on to that second seed. They actually have them tomorrow. Uh, you know, that's going to be a dog fight. Um, they have Houston after that on Sunday or the ABC mm. showcase game. Now that's going to be another MVP one. Game. Where MVP game. Yeah. Uh, they have my beloved Spurs on Tuesday, uh, yeah, Tuesday night. So, I mean, just those three games right there in a row um, with, you know, with the Pelicans kind of gaining some steam a little bit and uh, actually holding a tiebreaker uh, is, is going to be, uh, it's going to be kind of tough for them to, to really, you know, yes. they, they have uh, Sacramento, Indiana, and Minnesota as the three games that they should win, just looking at them on the schedule. 
So, um, you know, they, they probably would have to go five and two in order to keep the Pelicans off of them being up two mm-hmm. games on them. Uh, they probably could get, you know, the, the three games that I mentioned, the Kings, the Pacers, the Timberwolves, but uh, Portland, Spurs, Rockets, Grizzlies, those are going to be dog fights, And they just lost a, a tough game to, to Dallas where they scored 131 points. So it's like, <laughs> you know, uh, it's going to be <laughs> tough for them. Pops didn't um, pass the ball, man. Pops didn't pass yo, the ball. Yeah, hand. yeah it's, it's going to – he had 11 assists, but it wasn't, uh, it wasn't like impactful assists. Uh, when they Yo, uh, them. shout out to uh, Leroy McConnell who's in our chat room, and, and um, he said that uh, um, Steph Curry <laughs> went to Chris Paul camp as a kid. So why he's why is he doing that to him then, man? That's not that's that's not. Cool. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Oh, also, man, that's uh, crazy. also this yeah, guy says I, Kevin Durant equals Bill Walton. You out of control with that, man? He's not Bill. Nah, Walton. nah, no way. Kevin no, Durant it, is a it, league it's, MVP. It's too, it's too man. early. It's too early to, to, to say that, man. I mean, he he's had one major injury, you know. I mean, well, he's had one season of major injuries, I should say. He's saying but, just, he's saying just he he means the feet, just the bad feet. But anyway, yeah, you um, can't you can't mess around with the feet. I think they finally just got it through their heads, like being you know battling yeah. the Warriors in the first round isn't worth you know a residual effect on his feet for the coming years. Yeah. Because they, they, they were not going to beat the Warriors. I mean, it was going to be a good series. I don't think they were going to beat the Warriors in seven games with a with a, with, with a, a Durant that wasn't 100%. Yeah. Yeah. I, with, without Ibaka, you know? Like, without yeah, Ibaka, just, too, yeah. Yeah. I think once that happened, that kind of, that kind of like, was like, all right, yeah, we, we're just going to shut this thing down. So yeah. Everything shut seems to be working Let's itself out for, for, the, for the Warriors, man. So, you know, we'll see, we'll see what happens, man. Um, I already gave our, I already gave our stat of the week, but I just want to throw this other stat out there. Um, listen to these numbers. Russell Westbrook averaged 30.9 points per game and 10.2 assists in March after averaging 31 points per game and 10.3 assists in February. That's just ridiculous. That's just downright ridiculous. And you guys have mentioned a couple times the MVP race. Now everybody knows that it's, it's about the beard and you know um, the new face of State Farm because uh, they about to stop. They about, <laughs> no, they about to stop I think, working. I think, I, I think Cliff got that locked down. I, I don't think know. Got that down. Yeah, I don't, I don't know, know either, man. Like, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Step. <laughs> they must like they must they must pay in like um you know shares or something like that. You know they must give like you know shares of the company or what have you. And then Steph coming for them shares, man. Because uh, yeah. he sees him, he's looking food. He looking at him like food. So, but we, we know that those two people are saying are you know the top guys. But you got Russell Westbrook right there on there on there, right behind him. So I'm gonna ask each of you guys individually. If you had a vote for MVP, who would you give it to, and how would you rank those three one through three? If, if this was your vote right now, well, I'd I'd have to go uh, with James Harden for my vote. Um, just the things that he's been able to do. Terrence Jones missing 40 games. White Howard missing 34 games. Um, you know, guys in and out of the lineup. Pat- Patrick Beverly being hurt every six games, being in and out of the lineup. And yet, you know, they're fighting for the second seed in, a, you know, one of the, the best Western Conference races ever. Uh, you know, he's been able to, you know, to, to keep it steady. And, you know, he's, he's even transformed his game a little bit, even from, uh, you know, he was a, a target of, oh, he doesn't play defense, he doesn't do this, he doesn't do that. You know, he's, he's been more well-rounded and improved his game to an elite level, you know, than than anybody this year uh, besides Steph Curry. But I think just the fact that Houston has been so relevant, um, if I was to switch Curry and put him on Houston, uh, I don't think that they would be a two-seed. And that's how no. I look at it. I got, I got uh, Harden at one, Curry – um at two because uh, what they do as a team kind of really has elevated them as well uh and uh russell westbrook slash uh anthony davis if he could stay healthy right there like as, as three okay okay all right so you don't even got um you don't even have uh russ in the top three I mean, I I, I want to put him in a tie with the Browns based off of just the a, a tie. Okay. A tie. Yeah. All right. All um, right. So Phil. Just a bit outside. <laughs> so Phil. <laughs> um, 
who would you, who was your MVP and why? And how do you rank these guys top three? All right. Um, right off top, I had I had the beard as the MVP. Uh, he's tied with with uh, with with Pops Westbrook uh, for the league leading scoring. Um, he he too has had um, a key component of his team missing the majority of the year with Dwight Howard being out, and he's been able to lead them to the you know uh, fifty one and twenty four as they are right now. Uh, and he's been playing just lights out, like consistently mm-hmm. um, in, in big games. The reason I have him uh, over Steph is because Steph has a much better support and cast. I mean, Bogut has actually been playing. You know, he hasn't been hurt. Uh, of course, you got Clay and, you know, Eagle Dawes coming off the bench. You know, he would be a starter mm-hmm. on most teams in the league. So he has a much better support and cast. And, and as Vaz said, if you switched him, I think I think Golden State would still be sixty one and thirteen. The Rockets would not win be have fifty one wins if you switched places with them. So Beer yeah. first. And I actually I actually would have Westbrook second. I know he came on kind of, you know, late in the second half and he had the injury so he missed games early. But what he's been doing throwing those dudes on his back, 'cause they're they're not a very good team like they're the components. Without mm-hmm. you know, without Westbrook and Durant, so again, it's about that supporting cast, and I think the the weight that he's putting on and the way he's been able to to keep them uh, somewhat alive, you know, yeah. it's a, pretty much a one man gang. I would I would I would put him second narrowly over Steph, and Steph kind of unfairly loses because his team is good. You know, it's I mean, it's he's a part of why the team is good, but. I think they would still be pretty good without him. I think they would still be a good team without him on there. So, summing that up, I had the beard, Russell, and then Steph, and then the brow because he does. He's his team is losing, and he doesn't. He he, he doesn't. He misses a lot of games. He misses a lot of games. Got hurt in the shoot around. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, 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 <laughs> and, and, here, and, here, and I'll and I, and I'll and I'll end with this: if if the uh, Thunder doesn't make the playoffs, and you can't. I don't, I don't think you should be able to be an MVP if your team doesn't make the playoffs. So, I I that would eliminate Russell from that if they now if see that that's an interesting Same thing. Same thing with the beard. All right, let's run with that real quick. For one though, here, real quick before I even run with that, Anthony Davis is scary to me because he if he would have stayed in school, he could be playing for Kentucky right now. And yeah. to see that you guys are even you guys are even mentioning him, you know, even in the discussion itself is amazing. Considering he can literally be like in the final four right now. Imagine if he would they yeah, would have had the guy got now and him. He could be. That's crazy. That's crazy. He's the, he's the best. He's the best all around player in the, in the National Basketball Association. Wow, that's a that's a that's a that's a heavy statement. I don't know if I'm ready to say that. It's one of those things where you might be right, but I don't know if I'm ready to say that. <laughs> Just, I, don't I mean, say I can't that. say now, he, he's now, second, or or I can't give him first though. I can't. Not I'm yet. Sta- we 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 haven't even mentioned uh you know the guy from Akron yet, but it's that, funny yo, that, that that's where I, that, that's where I was going. Where I was going with my next statement is something that um <laughs> Bill brought up a couple times, right? Which is uh, talking about Steph being punished for how great of a team he has. The MVP yeah. is a subjective award. And I don't even know what the criteria is because a lot of times they give it to the best player and the best team. Um, some guys is the, is the most valuable person because at the end of the day, like with all with everything being said, who's more valuable to their team than LeBron? Like nobody. I don't care who you. Yeah. Are. No doubt. Now and if you you're right now you take you take there is no way that LeBron will ever be Jordan. Call me when LeBron has six championships. That's your only argument. It's the only argument I need, Sean. <laughs> now with that being said, <laughs> it's like. You rem- now the same the same logic you guys use. You remove him and put him there. Now, you remove Harden and put LeBron there. They may still be in the same spot. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. so the MVP to me is one of the more difficult things. Now, who do I think deserves it versus who do I think is going to win it? I think Steph's going to win it. Um, he is going to. And, and an argument can be made. I mean, you know, and I'm also a conspiracy theorist, so I think that the State Farm money is behind him. Um, you know, so. But anyway, State but all that being said, I think, long. <laughs> I think he will win it. Um, but I get uh, – this is the one of the more difficult seasons for me because 
I get all the arguments. I've been um, hard on James Harden, Pauls, because he is so deplorable on defense. He's so deplorable on defense that he's put just a little bit of effort in this season, and it's noticeable because, let's just face it, before he gave no effort whatsoever. Like, he played negative defense. Like, he didn't even try before. So just him trying a little bit makes him look like a so much better of a defensive player. He plays <laughs> on one side of the ball. Um, you know, so – but, again, when you watch that team consistently go down with injury after injury – Patrick Beverly and Mays even goes down and somehow they're still relevant. <laughs> like Savai said, it's like, you have to give that man his props. He's a member of beer gang. So he gets extra points for that. So I think that he probably deserves it, but I think LeBron has to be mentioned. He just has to be mentioned. Like he has to be somewhere in the top three to four players. I get the whole Anthony Davis thing. Um, I just think that maybe like next year, not yet. I'm just like, not yet, but I get it. Cause I've watched him play and I'm so impressed with, not just his game, but his overall improvement. Like his jump shot, like he changed his whole form, and now his yeah. jump shot is amazing. He as, he as definitely he definitely plays season, on both he, sides. He definitely plays on both sides. A, he's having a season that's as efficient as one of Wilt's best seasons as far as like player efficiency rating. I know that's <laughs> yes. like for the analytical guys out there, you know, stat geeks. Absolutely. Not, but. But yet, he, you know, he's doing something that, that hasn't been done in over 40 years in terms of just everything that he brings to the table, whether it's field goal percentage, whether it's him knocking down his free throws and blocking shots, yeah. getting offensive rebounds. It's just it's incredible to watch him, him play. And, you know, he's played his first four times, so I've had a chance to, to really see. But, yeah, he, he's, he's a beast, man. Maybe I am premature calling him the best player, but he, he's definitely the best guy I've seen this year so far. Mm -hmm. Yo, yeah, I mean – all I know is he missed those free throws in in, in one of the games. And then, and then after the game, he he shot free throws until he made a hundred. So that that yeah, tells yeah. you where his his mindset is at. So that's that's but listen, you, that, Yeah, he's that's a goddess because he's just scary. He's just scary. And, and and what you said, what you said, um, Zavada is one of those things, right? Where it's not that I disagree with you. I'm just not ready to say it yet. You know what I mean? Like. Yeah. I remember I remember when, when LeBron was gonna come up and like Kobe was still um you know that guy and everybody said, Well, LeBron's the best player in the in the, in the league. And I'm like, he might be. Just ain't ready to say it yet. You know what I mean? Like he might be. I just ain't ready to say it yet. Just like right now, I think Aaron Rodgers is the best quarterback in the league and probably has been for like the last three years. And some people were like, Oh yeah. no, Brady, Manning, like Sometimes things like you know to be true, but you just ain't ready to say it. Because when you look at the way that guy plays on the defensive end of the ball, he's just a, he's just a good a defensive player as he has offense. Yeah, hey, hey, and Jim, I don't know that I've I don't know if you can say that about nobody else we mentioned. I've, I've been exactly. I've been saying that about Aaron Rodgers, and you know, a couple a couple of my buddies they they gave me the business a little bit, especially the the uh, the Broncos um, Super Bowl year. They were giving me the business about it, but. I'm, I, Aaron Rodgers is, is my guy as far as being the best quarterback in the league. Yeah, I yeah, I agree, agree, agree. But that's the one thing I can say, Savai. Like, you, 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 you just running out there ready to say it. I don't know if I'm ready to say it yet, man. But, you know, that's something we'll talk about. We'll take to our, our social media platforms because that's, a, that's interesting. You think he's the best all-round player already. But, you know. Jim, let me, let me just, let me just uh, I, I, say one thing. This is a, this is a little nugget for, uh, for the War Room sports fans out here. Because uh, I'm a big uh, DeMarcus Cousins supporter, uh, apologist. Shot the Boogie Cousins. <laughs> he Boogie. leads the team or has, is tied for the team lead in 13 different box score stats. <laughs> Points, rebounds, assists, steals, blocks, turnovers. Okay, fouls. Minute, defensive rebounds, field goal attempts. Free Come throws, <laughs> field goals made, free throws made, free throw attempts. Thirteen different box score stats. I mean, he that's that's wild. Yeah, that's, that's completely that's just amazing, wild. man. He's wild now. Listen, um, at Casey Mac thirty eight, at Casey Mac thirty eight <laughs> on Twitter also chimed in. He just wants to second what you said that Davis is the best all around player and unstoppable. So you have like support out there. So the movement is growing. Um. In terms of Boogie Cousins, I don't know if you guys ever heard my story about Boogie Cousins when I went to watch the Sixers play uh, the Kings. And, you know, he has a reputation of just being lazy. Um, yeah. You know, no one's ever questioned his game. That's the crazy part. No one has ever questioned his game, his ability to play the game of basketball. But it's always about his laziness. 
When I went to watch him play at the game, my man didn't even participate in the layup drills. He was literally laid, sprawled out across the bench while his team prepared for the game. <laughs> and then when he was trying to tip off, he just jumped up and like ran out there. And I'm just watching this, and I, I'm sitting there with my homie at the game. I'm like looking at this like, yo, look at him. He's not even participating in the layup line. Like, what yeah. is he doing? But he's he, still he went out there. He's different categories to, to fill up, man. Every yeah. game. But I, I, don't know, <laughs> I don't know if that's necessarily a good thing. I mean, that, that, that kind of goes to show you how bad the Kings are. That he asked them. Yeah. That he's even in a position to lead them in 13 different categories. That, that's, a, that's another I mean, way that, to look at it. That's another way to look at it. And, and just, one, just one more stat, Jim. I have to throw this one out here, too. Uh, Wilt Chamberlain was the only NBA player to uh, to lead the team in field goal attempts uh, in less than 40 games, like playing less than 40 games until this year when Kobe Bryant and Carmelo Anthony uh, achieved the same feat, leading their team in field goal attempts, playing less than 41 games. So big shout to them, too. That. I know Kobe still leads the league, at least it's leads the Lakers rather than field goal attempts, and he hasn't played in yeah. forever. I knew that stat. He probably I saw the other day. field goal makes too. <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't check that one, but I did see the stat in terms of field goal attempts, which is a good point, man. Like you know, so I just want to say that LeBron has to be mentioned. Um, I do think Steph will win this award. Um, you know, and I also think it's kind of unfortunate when you get like punished for being on a better team. But I, I mean, that, that's True. why the MB, the term MVP has to they have to really let us know what it means because everybody has their own opinion of it. But that's why I don't like to judge players on subjective awards. Like this came up last week when Steve Nash retired and people were talking about where he ranks all time and they kept bringing up these MVP awards. And I'm like, well, that's a subjective oh. award. You know what I mean? Like one of those years Steve Nash won an MVP, Kobe averaged like 36 and seven. And Nash was like, Jack you know, Kobe should have won those one. awards, yo. I agree that, completely that with that. Won it the first year with Miami, and Kobe should have won it, like you mentioned, the, the year where he had 36 points. I co-sign that. I co-sign what you just said. I co-sign exactly what you just said. So that's the thing about these objective awards, and that's why, you know, but this is definitely one of the more tighter races this year. Um, you know, so we'll see what happens, man. We got a couple minutes left. Before we get out of here, man, survive. I talked to Phil about this, but I have to get your opinion, man. You guys are the hip-hop guys on the War Room Sports Podcast Network. Um, this past month, I've been continually listening to Kendrick Lamar's album, right? I'm going to yeah. tell you why. I think it's good, but the praise that it's getting, I don't get it. So I keep listening, trying to see if I, am I missing something? So I'm going to ask you, like, because I've seen people saying, like, it's the greatest album of the last 15 years. I saw one thing saying it's one of the top 20 hip hop albums of all time. Like, I, I, just, I see the praise and I don't get it. So I keep listening, like, maybe I'm missing something. So what do you think about it? Um, I'll just say this is not as good as good kid, mad city. Uh, that stayed in rotation for me for 26 months in my CD changer. I just took it out, uh, just because I just needed to, uh, for some closure. But, um, yeah, uh, <laughs> I, to, to just let you know, I took, uh, to pimp a butterfly out after about three days. And I, wow. to be honest, Phil and I, Phil and I say this all the time. Like, I don't ever have to hear it again. Like, wow. I, you know, it, it, it's good. Um, in terms of albums that you don't have to hear again, like I would be fine if I could only listen to Section 80 and um, Good Kid and I didn't have to listen to, to Pimple Butterfly. Like it, it has its merits, but um, it's definitely not uh, deserving of the high praise in my eyes. So, yeah, uh, and Phil said kind of the same thing. And But to me, Section 80 is his best album that no one's ever yeah. heard. It, to me, it's better than Good Kid and it's better than this newest yeah. album. Um, yeah. Sure. But what do, you, what do you think about all this praise though? Um, I think I think what it is too it's a matter of the fact that in the this just this year alone you've had Action Bronson come out you've had uh, J Cole now Wale uh, Drake's dropped a, a project and it's just for supremacy I think the people that that are looking at all these projects and they're becoming prisoners of the moment and just saying like you know Kendrick put a lot more thought into you mm -hmm. know what he does and um, it's definitely not a sonic thing I don't think sonically you can listen to this album and say that this sounds better than you know his previous gotcha. work or some of the the stuff that's out, but just his message, the quote unquote message, I guess you could say, and then just mm -hmm. the overall uh, perception of it's, how he is leads to that. It's this it's the speaker oh, yeah. box love below theory, man. Like like Outkast has way better albums than speaker box love below, but you'll have people that'll tell you that that's their best work, and it's the yep. most popular, gotcha. it's the most successful. 
but it's, it's obviously not the best word, clearly. AT aliens for sure. All right. Well, listen, gentlemen, uh, the great conversation. We definitely have to get out of here. Uh, thanks, everybody, for joining us in the War Room. Shout out to everybody in the chat room, Facebook, Twitter. The calls who chimed in, we appreciate it. For the calls we didn't get to, we apologize. I just want to give a special thanks to the homies Phil and Zavada of Tissue and the Tape for co-hosting with me today. Thank you, man. Tune in next week. Thank same you. time, same place, live right here on demand on the WRS Podcast Network, um, where you can also find Phil and Zavada, Tissue and the Tape. Uh, next week, we'll talk more NBA basketball, recap the Final Four, and we'll discuss all the big stories in the world of sports. So until then, catch us. WarroomSports.com. You can get all of our links for everything, social media, webcasts, uh, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, all of that right there. As we always say, don't accept mediocrity. Be steadfast in the war against ignorance, and we'll see you chumps on top. www.warroomsports.com What? Ain't no more to it.